Let's now join our commentators at the MCG for the opening bounce, Peter McKenna and Jack Edwards. 86 opening at the MCG, good crowd in attendance. And these two teams wish to do well for 1986 and climb up the ladder and possibly make the five. At the bounce, Lee straightens up, got the tap down, picked up and kicked up toward the half forward zone. Players come out to meet it. It's a chance now for Land. He got a hand pass going forward. Richmond going into attack with the ball slews off the side of the boot. A defensive work done by Batterston. He moves the ball back to the wing position on the outer side. Going into meet it is Egan. Egan can't get there before this new player for Richmond coming out, Turner. Turner shoots in a hand pass. Over to Peter Moore. Peter Moore with a long kick up towards half forward. Going in after the Richmond defenders. Desperate play by all players concerned under these hot conditions. Palm gets it across towards his teammate Michael Lockman. Lockman comes away from defence. Brings it out towards Flower for Melbourne. And Robbie Flower, the owner of the Melbourne Knights, goes for the hand pass. Over to Johnson. Alan Johnson picks up, snaps at the goals, up the full board, but a safe mark is taken down there, but it's a free kick. It's a free kick given against Peter McCormack, right in front of goal. I think the recipient will probably be, let's have a let's have a look, it's going to the Melbourne player right down there in front of goal in Reynolds, Michael Reynolds, there he is. He's come back from serious uh, knee problems, Michael Reynolds, and has been awarded a free kick right in the teeth of goal, and this will be a goal straight through, first goal of the game, first score of the game, kicked by Melbourne by Michael Reynolds. Well, Peter, we had a shot uh, there of Peter McCormack coming over from Collingwood and playing in the uh, Richmond Colours this afternoon. There you are, number 15. Very hard to recognise in that new outfit, isn't it? Well, it's amazing once they get into a different jumper and these days Jack with many many players uh, interchanging clubs we see that every week but Peter won't be happy with that to give away a goal so early in his career with Richmond. Well the centre bounce once again the umpires I've mentioned are Howlett and Hinton the ball being put down again Melbourne one goal Richmond have not yet scored Moore went for the tap it came out off the hands towards Francis Francis got around got a funny little hand pass out picked up by Michael Roberts playing his first game for Richmond the ball gets pushed out toward that half-back flank. Burke came out to meet it. Now, here's another chance for Melbourne. If that's not a throw, I'm not here. That ball was hand-passed by Bailey, but it wasn't a good one. And now Melbourne once again try to get into attack through the half-forward line. Right, and that's a free kick down the field. Now, Grinter, oh, the umpire's taken a tumble down here at centre half-forward. But uh, Grinter getting a pat on the back. The umpire has recovered as Grinter a long way out from goal. Good Goes kick. for a low trajectory uh, torpedo punt offline and through for one behind. So Melbourne doing well early in the game, but bear in mind we've only been going almost uh, three minutes in this first quarter. Melbourne are on one goal, one. Richmond yet to score. The defence of the Melbourne side of the stage, Peter, standing up fairly well. Funny looking kick in from full back, but taken by Mark Lee at the half-back position. The 15 metre penalty will go against Melbourne. He hand passes on to Strawn. Greg Whoa. Strawn gets it moving. Could be a free kick upfield. Could Possibly be a could be a number two. Could be a blue on here at the, the wing position. Big Mark Lee uh, getting upfield, getting away from any troubles that may have been. Well, I'm glad the umpires showed restraint then and didn't report Mark Lee because uh, I reckon he had every right to do what he did and it was only uh, a little minor altercation and the umpires showed common sense. Well, can Richmond get back in the game and get a start through Landy though? The kick isn't a good one. Off the side of the boot, up towards the goal square it travels. Off their hands, picked up and snapped by James. What is it? It's only one well, behind. So it was a good try, a left foot snap, but only not quite getting through the goals, only bringing up the minor part of the prize. Richmond on one point. And Melbourne on one one seven points. You're on seven's big league, of course, and we're four minutes into the first term. Joe Regalo is playing on Michael Roach, and with his height, that will certainly help him. There's Danny Hughes. He's a real goer. Oh, beautifully taken by Michael Roberts. Gets it out to Johnny Anier. Under the left foot he goes. He fires at the goals. Pickering's there. Not quick enough to get to the ball before it goes over the line and through for the first score for Richmond, or second score, I should say. Richmond on two behinds and Melbourne on one goal, won a total of seven. These players will feel the pinch as this day wears on because we, as I said before, expect 32 degrees and it's going to be boiling out there. Good mark to Wilson, the Brownlow medalist for Melbourne. Only got a 15 metre start well, there, but he got a hand pass away to Cole. Cole's kick, not a good one, coming down to the wing position. It's been picked up by Stretch, a new player for Melbourne, kicking Stephen Stretch up to the half forward line. Oh, a bit of hesitation there in the Richmond boys' minds. Lockman picks up, his kick ineffective. It comes slightly up the toward the flank. Out of bounds would be the result now, and the umpire will say a boundary throw in. 
great to see Michael Lockman, Jack in the Richmond Guernsey. He was a very, very good under-19 player. Uh, didn't quite make it, then went to South Australia and is back at Richmond, which is uh, terrific news. And he's already looked pretty promising in this first quarter, as we see Thornton, the player recruited from Brunswick, trying to get it out. Back it comes to Michael Roberts, who's in everything at the moment. He gets in a hand pass to Trevor Poole. Over to Strawn. Strawn slow to get rid of it. Back to Anir. Oh, Anir cops one high across the head. And Johnny Anir on centre wing. He'll run on the left foot. He loves kicking on that left foot. Over to Peter Francis. Centre wing. Francis goes for the stab pass. It's a ripper. Oh, beautiful lead by Mark Lee. And what a pass by Peter Francis. And Lee has taken this mark at centre-half board, it will still require a pretty good kick, Jack. Yes, I doubt if he'd make it, uh, although if he's got his right boots on, he could. He's about 45 out, 45 to 50. You can't see a little bit of breeze here, but it doesn't make much difference at the MCG. The kick of Lee is just going to make the grade, but it's off target, and it's through for one behind. So Richmond, with three attempts to score a goal, have not been successful. Only three behinds for their effort, and Melbourne on one one seven points. The time clock showing six minutes have gone. They're in the first term on Sevens Big League from the MCG in the opening round of 1986. Here's uh, Craig Stewart going for that mark. Couldn't take it. It's kicked away by Bailey. Up towards centre wing. Oh, Peart has dropped the sitter there, Neil Peart. Slow to recover. In they go after it on centre wing. Poole tries to get it out. He does. He gets it to Thornton. who cups one across the face. He gives it to Lockman. Michael Lockman runs into a brick wall. Grinter was there for Melbourne. Beautifully done. Looking for Wilson. But Johnny O'Neill knocks it over over the line and out of bounds but players are looking pretty ferocious out there they realize the importance of this first game of the season we see or oh, was that in the back no play on as we see Lockman getting it back towards center wing but straight in the hands of the Melbourne champ no way to go. and look at the way beautiful football flower breaks away and brings it towards full forward who's there up they go it's all Richmond Peart from behind take it away by Thorpe beautifully smothered by Johnson here's Stephen Stretch picking it up at the goals and I think the young fella has missed and oh what great play that was by Alan Johnson. A well, good bit of football there from the Melbourne team. Oh, gee they're looking a little bit mean out there too. They're going for that ball they, as though they want to eat it. Both teams hungry for possession but uh, they can't all have it together only one player at a time. Now's Peter McCormack in his new rig. Does look different doesn't he? McCormack's kick up toward the centre. Good kick too. Travels well. Missed by Wilson. Hand pass on. Pickering gives it out. Richmond go forward once again. Egan down towards full forward where Roach is out positioned on that occasion by Regalo. And Joe Regalo brings it away and kicks it wide looking for Daryl Burke. Burke's out there against Dale Waitman who hasn't been in the play yet. Burke wins out. Comes away with a football. A little stab pass towards half forward where it's taken down there by the racehorse. Have a look at him go Richards. He's got it. Ducks around. Onto the left foot he goes, up towards centre half forward, but it's all Richmond and Craig Stewart ducks back to take a safe mark. And passes on to the Richmond team moving the ball quickly. It's been driven up there by Egan, up to the centre of the ground. Moore dropped the easy mark, but the umpire has paid it. Might have been a touch lucky there. Moore with the ball in the centre of the Melbourne cricket ground. Going for a torpedo punt, turns into a drop punt really. It's a high one, one for the ground I would think. No, the man in front, the long arms claim the mark. And that man down there is Craig Stewart. 15 metres will start him up towards the centre-half back position. Good to see Richmond using Craig Stewart on the ball. I think that's his best spot, uh, Jack. Well, he's doing quite well at present. Lee in the pack, can't take the mark. The Rovers are down in front. No, Flower oh. came in a bit late, couldn't take it. It's been picked up and kicked hurriedly there by Hughes. Kicks very high toward this centre-half forward position. Now the race is on. Grinder can't get there. Johnson's first to it. Gets it down. McCormack out in front. The ball eludes him. Another chance now for Reynolds. Reynolds picks up for Melbourne, shoots toward goal. But they can't get goals, can they? Oh, gee, they've had a few chances. Peter McCormack was uh, very, very slow to recover on that occasion. A and, bad uh, bounce, Peter. That ground well, would be a little bit hard and the yeah, ball would be tricky. Fair enough. But yeah. uh, Reynolds is looking quite dangerous down there at full forward, as we see Greg Strawn, who was selected on half-back flank and is obviously playing there, is bringing it out towards half-back. It's marked there by Peter Francis, who brings it wide towards Michael Pickering. Playing on Robbie Flower, is he? It's uh, Flower holding on. The umpire going to play the 15 metres now. Oh, it's get, oh, gets out the hand pass to Peter Francis. He's going to look for Roach. Out comes the big full forward. Can't take it over the back. Here's a chance by Young Thornton into the open goal. He goes and he puts it through for a goal to Richmond. Well, at the nine and three quarter minute mark of the first term, Richmond and Melbourne are level. Yes, it was a good goal by Thornton, took the ball well and went straight into goal. 
and uh, kicked it through from only a few metres out. So that was very, very well done. Which Richmond would do something about there, uh, as we see the scoreboard, uh, one goal, three apiece. That Thornton coming from Brunswick, Brunswick have uh, quite a few Thorntons oh. in their uh, history. I know a couple of Thorntons used to play at Brunswick. I just wonder if there's any relation to them. And by the way, what a couple of... They've produced some great players. Keith Gregg and Wayne Schimmelbush are two that come to mind. As we see Johnson, who's playing a great quarter, gets it down towards half floor. This looks... Oh, oh David yeah. Palm has dropped the sitter. Did he cop it? Oh, the umpire paid the free, but and then paid the advantage. And we see Neil Peart back at Richmond after a stint at Footscray. Down towards half floor. A nice mark by Graham Landy. Oh, over to Pickering. He was covered. Oh, it breaks the tackle. Goes for the kick down towards uh, half forward. Or oh, forward pocket. And that's Michael Roach taking that mark over the back of Regolo, but that was a dangerous hand pass, but Lux of Fortune, it came off. It was a dangerous hand pass, but a beautiful pass by Pickering to be able to lob the ball over the top of Joe. Regolo did everything right. He was out in front of Roach. He had the, the right. right spot, but a beautiful pass, popped it over his head, and now we'll see if Roach can really get this goal from the boundary. Not an easy shot. The, the camera will be right behind him. You'll get the angle as he goes in. Richmond need a goal to go to the front. Any score will put them in front because scores are level. 1-3-9 each at this stage of the game, and it is... It's true. The goal kicked by Roach. Yes, a lovely goal to Michael Roach. He's a very dangerous whenever he gets the ball near goal. It's a very accurate kick. Scoreboard, Richmond 2-3-15, leading Melbourne, one goal, 3-9. Well, Pete, how would you like to be out there today in this heat? Well, I wouldn't mind it at full forward. Uh, you'd get a bit of a breather, but anywhere else on the ground, Jack, I think they're going to really earn their money today, these players. Real oh. summer conditions. My word, it is. Back to the centre. The bounce now. 15 playing nine. Um, chance for Johnson to go forward. Looking for a teammate down. They see that ball's bouncing badly. Once again, uh, it eluded McCormack. It's been picked up by Strawn and going into the, into the back pocket for Richmond. Very close to oh. the boundary line. And those two players down there, 23 and 24, they're going to confuse me all day. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm all, already having trouble with 27 and 37, Thornton <laughs> and Lockman. <laughs> and they're, they're playing near each other and they look alike. And uh, for those Richmond jumpers, are very, very difficult to pick out. There's a beautiful play by Daryl Cox. So he hooks it towards the pocket. Out comes Reynolds. Oh, nearly took a good mark. Hotly pressing him there was Peter McCormack. And the ball is forced over the line. But that looks like being a great duel down there. Yeah, McCall Max had a, had a couple of bad bounces go against him, I've noticed. But anyhow, you'll have to try and get over that. The ball thrown in from the forward oh. That's just about a throw. Been picked up by Batterson, hooked toward Gold. If it gets over the top of these two competing, and it does it, McCall Mack got the hand to it, and it goes through for one behind. So Richmond on 2 3 15. Melbourne on 1 4 10. That's the story on the scoreboard here at the MCG. We're approaching the nearly the 13 minute mark of the first term. Lee in front, oh, punched away by uh, Danny Hughes, very disciplined play. Here's Johnson again on the left foot, down towards Reynolds, playing to the side of Peter McCormack, and he takes the mark about, oh, only about eight metres out, almost directly in front. This could be young Michael Reynolds' second goal of the game coming up. He hard one to miss, really. All he has to do is make the distance with the kick of about 15 metres. He'll keep back away from the man on the mark. Puts it onto the boot rather well, and it's through for a goal. Another goal to Melbourne. Two goals to Michael Reynolds, as I said, and the scoreboard shows Melbourne one point in front. Two goals, four, 16, leading Richmond, two goals, three, 15. Well, Pete, you and I were talking yesterday at the Good Friday appeal for the Children's Hospital. We said it should be a fairly even game. Well, I know it's only nearly 14 minutes into the first term, but you couldn't get much more even than that, could you? 15 playing 16, and that's the way the game's going, too. Yes, well, uh, Melbourne are getting an enormous drive from uh, Alan Johnson around that centre. He's just belting the ball into attack at the moment, and uh, they're looking quite promising. But as you said, early days, we see more, or is it Hughes? They look very like it was more that time. Out to Stewart. Stewart hand passed about two inches there. Oh, Hughes went in very, very hard. Michael Roberts pounces on it. He's done well. Oh, beautifully done to Landy. Landy towards half. Oh, well done. Yeah. Stephen James, a Jeez. beautiful grass-cutting... Uh, pass to James who might have a touch of cramp there but uh, yeah. he's going to go back and have this shot for goal from 35 to 40 metres out directly in front. It's a lovely pass all right. Richmond are using the ball well. In fact both teams are using the ball well. The ground as I said before would be hard, a little bit tricky. The bounces are erratic. And here's a chance for Richmond once again through James. He had one snap earlier in the game and missed. He's getting advice or otherwise from the people around him. 35 to 40 out. Oh, I think he's missed it. 
Yes, only one behind. So Richmond now, two goals four, Melbourne two goals four, 15 minutes into the first term at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The opening game for 86. Joe Regalo brings it in, looking there for Peter well done. Moore, who flies over the back and takes a beautiful mark. They'll need uh, Peter Moore really firing today, I would think. He was playing against there, that Mark and Jill against an old teammate in Craig Stewart. Now there's a bit of interference holding going on here, said the umpire. It's going against Russell Richards, I think, and going back to Richmond, and that is to Lockman. Lockman gives it across to Dale Waitman. I think that's his first touch of the ball as he brings it down towards his big mate and Mark Lee. Lee towards the half forward line. That'll be in the back, I would well think. Well played. Yes, said the umpire. Yes. He did that well. Very well played, Mark Lee. He'll take this kick out toward the half forward flank, round about the, crack, uh, the practice wicket area. Kicking into the forward pocket. Richmond want a goal. Can they get to the front? We'll soon find out. The ball near the boundary line. Regolo runs it out and we'll see a boundary throw in taking place in Richmond's forward pocket position. We're 16 minutes now into the first term. The game at the Melbourne Cricket Ground between Richmond and Melbourne. We couldn't get much more even. 2-4 apiece. Boundary throw in. Richmond in attack. Roach doing the ruck work. Grabbed by Michael Roberts who's showing a lot of endeavour early in this game. That will probably be a throw in I would think. It is said the boundary umpire and uh, with the scoreboard showing two goals for a piece we're at the 16 minute mark of this first quarter let's see who's doing the ruck work it's uh, Roach again against Peter Moore it's in that forward pocket area players pounce on the ball and the umpire this time I think it's umpire no it's not umpire Hell, it's umpire Hinton this time he's a chance bounce the ball chance for uh, Richmond now because the ball's been moved away from the boundary line and it's only 20 meters out from their goal but Moore changes that he thumps the ball toward the boundary James playing well for Richmond rode the bump well got a hand pass I think a wild one downfield has been picked up and hurried back uh, by Piat up toward Moore who dropped the head when going for the mark, couldn't quite take it. Picked up by Bailey of Melbourne, he kicks back toward the flank and the mark has been taken out there on the practice wicket area by the Richmond player in Egan. Egan will be looking for a pass I would think, I don't think he'd make the distance from there Pete. He might be waiting for Roach getting ah. back in the square. No, he's gone for the short pass and found Stewart. Well he's a long way out now, he is a magnificent kick of a football. Oh, he uh, need Craig to be Stewart. from there too. Well if he goes for a torpedo punt he'd go close, a drop punt wouldn't make it I wouldn't How's he think. holding it? He's a, he's a going very for a very long kick, he's going uh, for Craig a torp. Stewart. Look at that, going look at that torp. for a kick. Bad luck. He went for the torpedo, no, he got so it, say. didn't quite get it properly, it wobbled a bit off the yeah. boot, but it was just off target, but a, a beautiful attempt to score a goal. Well, I know, he's played at full back, the scoreboard by the way, one point in favour of Richmond, but Stewart is uh, one of the longest kicks in league football, and when he went back for that one, I knew he could make the distance, but the accuracy was just off, as we see Peter Moore popping one across the ear from Mark Lee. That was a rather dangerous pass by Regolo <laughs> there, putting the ball in towards centre-half back. I'll say, there's Very a shocking dangerous. looking kick. Craig Stewart goes up, he's knocked away by Hughes. Now, this Alan Johnson again, it is. Oh, Grinder. beautiful pass out to Grinter. Grinter has got the run of the ball. Poole's got a bit more pace than him. He throws the ball away. Now, the umpire will say that. I reckon that was a good decision by umpire. It was. Gallup. Yes, it was dead Excellent right. Excellent umpiring because... We had a good shot of that too. It was a good tackle there by Poole. Poole had the pace to catch Grinter. And uh, there's the kick up towards Flower. Oh. Flies over the back and takes a lovely mark on his chest. Yeah, Flowers is certainly in bloom. He's not too old yet as Robbie Flower. He'll be looking for someone to take a big mark, but Cormac will go the spoil. Reynolds will try and come in from the side. But no, the ball does come to turf. Picked up by and shot out very quickly by Palm. There's a chance for Lockman moving the ball out to Warder Near on the wing position on the outer side. On the outer side, it's Ania coming around again, bringing the ball into Ward. James is doing very well. Oh, he? he must no, have he got a call it. from Roach. He left it for Roach yeah. and said leave it. There's no doubt about that. He got a call. He was flying in the air. He dropped yeah. the hands very quickly and Roach was right behind him. It was good team play, but Roach didn't take the mark. That could be a problem though, Jack. That might be a little problem down there. Stephen James and Michael Roach tend to... Well, James plays like a full forward. They may get in each other's way. Now, that was a... Uh, an occasion there. There was Stephen Stretch who couldn't quite get away. There's Phil Egan. Oh, crashes his way through onto the left foot. A beautiful looking kick. Pickering flies. Punched away. Good discipline play down there by the Melbourne player. I think it might have been Turner. I'll try and pick him up in a moment. Once again, you're Wally talking about flying round. against each other. The Pickering may have that effect yes. too on Roach down there. They all like to get in the action. We see the ball coming out towards... Oh, that's a free... Oh, no, they're playing the advantage. I 
maybe. There's Neil Pierce, grabbed it in the centre of the ground, brings it towards half four. And there waiting at the back is Michael Pickering, beautifully judged. He's only 30 metres out directly in front. The Richmond trainers are charging out. Someone must be hurt. On a day like today, they're taking out the water bottles, Pete. That's what they're doing. They've charged out four of them to give all the uh, Richmond players a drink. Try and uh, refresh them a bit. Pickering shot toward goal. Looks like it's split the centre from here. The umpire indicates a goal to Richmond. And another one on the board for the Tigers. Scoreboard. 3-6 Richmond leading Melbourne two goals for and the Tigers just starting to look dangerous and starting to get their game going at the moment Jack as we see well, you can't see it on screen at the moment but Mark Eustace is on the boundary line warming up they may interchange him shortly the ex Essendon player good honest player Mark Eustace too as we see the bounce of the ball and Lee going against the young player. Number 41 for Melbourne is Stephen Turner and uh, here we go with Mark Lee getting the hurry kick in down towards uh, Michael Chance. Roberts. He swings onto the left foot. Up in the air it goes. Joe Regalo tries to get there but the ball was out of bounds on the fall. There was a chance there for Roberts. He was moving into goal and getting around onto his left foot. He's kicking foot but he was he tackled right at the, the right time and kick went offline. Regalo's kick up toward Pickering. Oh. He just about held that too. Comes out toward Egan. He can't pick it up cleanly. Been forced out once again. Looked like a near got the hand pass off the ground but back it goes into a pack of players. The umpire indicates a push in the back and the Melbourne side will take the free kick from that half back line. Down yes to... and that uh, player for Melbourne was Stephen Newport getting it down there to Brian Wilson. Cleverly done. He's looking for Bailey. Bailey hasn't got a ton of pace. He should handball this. He does. Here's the danger man. Alan Johnson. Oh, brilliant football. But he tried to do... He didn't have any backup support there. And Trevor Poole comes away with the football. Brings it down towards the centre of the ground. The mark is dropped. Charging through is uh, Nigel Cole. He ducks back onto the right foot. Oh, lovely looking kick. But who's there for Melbourne? Over the back is Reynolds. Couldn't take it. He's battling against four Richmond players there. Reynolds, where's his support? Now he's got it through Johnson. He hooks it back looking for Peter Moore. Up in front is oh. Moore. Oh, gee, some strong work went on there. Now it's a chance for Grinter. Grinter bustled out of the way by Strawn, and Strawn, like a true backman, heads for the boundary line, and the umpire lets him run over the line with that one. A lot of pressure on the Richmond defenders on that occasion. With time clock showing, we're getting toward the 22 and a half minute mark of the first term. John Inia picks it up, shot out a hand pass to the Richmond defence, standing firm this time. The ball driven up by Landy. It's on the wing position where the free kick has been awarded to Pickering. A long way out of position though he's only on the half back line more so than the wing he gets a hand pass back to Landy who follows the ball through nicely kicks with the right foot on this occasion up toward Lee the ball put down toward Roberts taken oh. by Nia tackled too high he hand passes to Roberts it was a bad hand pass Roberts wrong footed too drives into the forward pocket Roach comes out of bad bounce for Regalo taken by Roach the left foot snap and goal is on Roach goes goal and he's hit the post did he or not yes he hit the post oh, gee, that deserved a goal that, that was brilliant play by Michael Roach Richmond have moved on to 3-7, leading Melbourne 2-4, but Roach, six foot four of him, he came out like a little rover, swung onto the left foot, and that deserved a goal, but unfortunately for he and uh, Richmond, it missed. There's Robbie Flower, beautiful positioning. Gee, you can't keep a champion out of it. It's a beautiful judgment there, and I think that's what makes a good player, that, that judgment, Jack. He's a magnificent footballer, Robbie Flower. He's on the half-back line now, looking into a fairly congested half-forward zone. He puts the ball up high and hopes, I think. Oops, there. Ball will come to turf. Grinder was waiting for the crumb. Didn't go into the pack to try and take the mark. The ball's on the turf now. Now it's over the boundary line. So a boundary throw-in will take place on the half-forward flank for Melbourne. Scoreboard showing 25 to 16. Richmond leading by that nine point mark. Well, Melbourne have got to start contesting a bit more on that forward line. They're leaving it up there to Reynolds. They've got to get up there and uh, contest. They've been one against three and four every time up there, Jack, as we well see. Done. Oh, beautiful football. They're looking for Stewart, but waiting at the back. Now, this time it is Lockman, I think, or was it Thor? I think it was Lockman. They look very, very alike. Up towards the little Waitman. Waitman to Francis. Francis onto the left foot, looking to Anir. Anir has got the run of it. A hand pass over the top, looking for Roach. Will it bounce through him? Oh, beautifully done, Michael Roach. But now he's caught. Umpire calls play on as Cole gets it hurriedly to his boot. Good defence by Melbourne because that looked like being a Richmond goal, Jack. Oh, gee, it's a good game of football. I'm enjoying this because Melbourne and Richmond are fighting. They're trying to get back up the ladder over the last couple of seasons they've been down. 
and they're putting their all into this game and I, I know that you will be enjoying a football on Sevens Big League. The ball on the turf now, into the forward pocket, Bailey's kick comes down and only to the half back line and is being grabbed out there on that half forward zone. Richmond players trying to swing into position through Thornton, is another big go, the long kick from Stewart goes up towards the square, drifts to the pocket, Roach can't mark it, picked up by Cole of Melbourne, he can't get it very far, taken by Bailey, Bailey now from the half back line trying to get the ball down for, tried to draw the players up, he did that but it can't be handled cleanly and it's Cole of Melbourne through the wing position coming down to the half forward zone, puts it on its way, punched away by Lockman, the ball toward the boundary line, it's hurried into Melbourne's forward zone now, Reynolds is there and Reynolds takes the mark. Oh he had a loose man and the Richmond players knew it too, yes. that was good for 15 metres. He's done for these 15 metres. Well, he's doing really, really well, Michael Reynolds. He's been most impressive at full forward. I said early in the piece, and it was great play too by the Melbourne players to get it down to him quickly. He took a lovely mark. Now he's right in front of goal. Is that his third? The goal up, I didn't move. Yes, it is. Three goals to Michael Reynolds. And Melbourne move on to three goals, four. Trailing Richmond, 3-7. Yes, he's certainly doing well down there against an accomplished back man in Peter McCormack. Or is it Strawn gone back there now? No, I see Strawn down in that area, but McCormack is still on Reynolds. So uh, he's having his work cut out, and Peter McCormack, he'll be well, a bit perturbed today, having oh, three well, goals kicked on him already. Peter's uh, a very tight player normally, and a, a very good, honest player, but by heck, it's a bad start for his career with Richmond. Three goals already, and we've only been playing 26 minutes. Richmond lead by three points, Sevens Big League, the first term of the game at the MCG, the opening round of 86. Ball thumped to turf, it's been taken and hurriedly booted downfield. Uh, it's been kicked right in the direction of the half four line by Newport, and a mark taken oh. in defence down there by Lockman, oh, doing quite well for Richmond. That was pure courage. That He's looking for a teammate now, the leads aren't really good, they're all leading toward the, the fence, I don't think he wants that type of lead. He sees Francis now, goes for Francis, and that was a good mark, well placed kick too. Lockman using the ball well and he's getting it fairly often too. There's a kick from France, it's a high one. We'll come to turf, I would think, because the pack come into it now. But picked up, no, Waitman didn't pick it up cleanly. He's trying to get it now. Tapped it down like a basketball. Very clever play, Dale Waitman. Can't gain it though. Roberts goes in, uses the body well. Tried to keep the ball in play and an umpire sit in the back. Uh, holding the ball is fine. Oh, he couldn't. He has. He's paid holding the ball, he signalled Jack, and Alan Johnson has taken this free kick on half-back flank. Well, he brings it up towards up here, and oh, he had his teammate there, it was a mark lead. No, it's not, it's Trevor Poole taking that mark on centre wing. I now, told you those two would get us before the day yeah, was out. well, there he is, Poole, <laughs> up towards Pickering, up he goes, can't take the mark. Mark Lee over the back, Stephen Stretch charges through, loses the run of it. Now it's Brett Bailey, oh, Regalo took his eye off that one, well done, Mark Lee. Over the top looking for Landy. Now he's got it, Graham Landy. Oh, very ordinary looking kick as we see. Cole intercept gets it out there to Wilson. Wilson's got no one at all to kick it to. So he cleverly goes, does the old Johnny Beckwith kick straight to the boundary line. But where were his teammates? He had no option but to put it out there. The only two players he could see downfield, down oh, around Richmond. the wing position, were Richmond players. And he just went for the boundary line with a sort of underground pass and found the white line. So Strawn in there against Moore, but couldn't do much with it, of course. The ball's on the turf. That was Thornton coming through. But Johnson's hand pass comes out to Peter Moore. Peter Moore of Melbourne swinging back the wrong way, playing a dangerous brand of football, giving the ball to Johnson who gets it back toward the centre of the ground where players set themselves but no mark is taken. It comes a turn. By Michael Roberts comes up. There's a chance now for Pickering and he takes the mark for Richmond but it may just touch his kicking distance. Peter, he, no, he was, went for, he was thinking of a short well, pass. He may think he's out a little bit too far. Not a, not a long kick Michael Pickering but a uh, league footballer shouldn't make the distance from where he is Jack oh, Pickering sure. not is not far at all has a chance to put Richmond further in front Richmond leading by three points Pickering going for his second goal it's a drop punt kick which is on its way and he may have got it yes he's got it through all right another goal to Richmond another goal to Pickering well they've got a tremendous three-pronged attack up there in the four seven Richmond by the way to Melbourne three four so Richmond just edging across um, Pickering has kicked two goals, but they've got James, they've got Roach, and they've got Pickering. Now, it probably makes it a little bit hard for Roach with all these guys leading across in front of him, but uh, by heck, they've got three good players up there to convert. Now, we were talking to Michael Roach yesterday at the appeal. He said he doesn't care who kicks the goals as long as Richmond no. win the matches, and that's the right approach. Okay. So there's the rap duels have taken place, the ball thumped down. It's either Pearl or Perth, but there's a siren to end the first turn. 
And the first quarter ending at the MCG with Richmond on 4-7-31, Melbourne 3-4-22. As we start the second term at the MCG, we see that Richmond leading Melbourne by nine points. Richmond 4-7, Melbourne 3-4. Moore awaits the ball, beaten by Lee, tapped down to Waitman, can't do a great deal with it. Wilson dives on top of it, can't get it away, does hook it out of the pack eventually, but the whistle sounds and the umpire said a bounce will take place still in the centre of the Melbourne cricket ground. 4-7 to 3-4, I told you, Richmond leading Melbourne, a very interesting first quarter in which young Reynolds of Melbourne, young Michael Reynolds, kicked the whole three goals for Melbourne. Towards half forward now, that might have been in the back, no, said the umpires, we see Egan come away with the football, the long flying shot at the goals and it hit the post. So That's two they've had. Yes, they've had two posters, Michael Roach hit the post once in the first quarter and uh, that's their second. As we see, Richmond are out on 4-8, leading Melbourne 3-4. It was a very, very good first quarter, with Richmond just edging away towards the end of the final, uh, end of the quarter. Now, here's Danny Hughes, who's been really trying hard today without doing anything spectacular. He's probably the best player on the ground in Alan Johnson. Well He's done. had the ball on a string as he gives it to Peter Moore. He has a bounce. He's going for the long kick towards the goals. He brings it up towards full forward and off the hands of the players up there and through for a point at the other end of the ground. So Melbourne just creep a little bit closer. 3-5 to Richmond 4-8. Peter McCormack in the new colours for him coming from Collingwood this season and opening up at full back for Melbourne in the first game. McCormack having, not having a good day so far, having three goals kicked against him by Reynolds. Now here's a chance for Stephen Stretch, a new player for Melbourne, kicking into the forward pocket. Well placed kick, and the champion you see in action there is Robert Flower. <laughs> Robbie Flower's played quite well in this game so far. Hopefully he's got over that injury we saw him get last year, Peter, that shoulder oh, injury. Wouldn't it, be see? Great? wouldn't it be great to see him have a, a full year on that wing? A great player. Now he should kick this about 25 metres out. The angle's a bit tight though. I don't think it made any difference. Robbie Flower gets his first goal. Melbourne have moved on to 4-5, 29 to Richmond, 4-8, 32. And this has been a seesawing game with a very, very even contest. A couple of times, Jack, in that first quarter, I thought Richmond were going to run away with it. But Melbourne, the young players, and uh, with the help of their experienced players too, have fought it right out and we're seeing a very entertaining game. Yes, if all the, if the other two games are as good as this today, the football public will be enjoying a feast of football. Centre bounce once again. Your umpires today being umpires Howlett and umpires Hinton. Now, a chance for more again. A long hand pass. A good one at that too. Giving Melbourne the opportunity through Grinder to go forward. He gets a hand pass over. It's been hurriedly moved up there by Cox it was and the mark taken out here by Russell Richards, so he's in the shadow, you see that shadow on the ground there, the Melbourne players took refuge there at, at quarter time, they made their break there in the middle of that uh, shadow, it's that hot here at the MCG, good kick, it's on its way, it's through! <laughs> Richmond 4-8-32, Melbourne 5-5-35, you're on Sevens Big League and all the action from the Melbourne cricket ground. Well, up in the bar after the game tonight, I'm sure that Daryl Cox, Jack, will be saying that was a great pass to uh, Rhino, as they call Russell Richards, uh, because he just hooked that back any old how, and of course Richards was standing there and took them up. But what a lovely kick, as you call it. Well, Melbourne have gone from nine points down only three and a half minutes ago to be three points in front. So the game is, will it be, at the end of the, round, at the, end of the game. It's uh, Lee getting the ball out, taken by Francis. The kick, not a long one, picked up and hurriedly booted in toward the centre of the ground where Grinder comes in again. Grinder gets it moving up toward the forward pocket. A well-placed pass and he's found Turner. Oh, Melbourne moving the ball well early in the second quarter. Now Turner, we don't know much about him, knowing he's a new player from the West, isn't he, Pete? I think South Australia, South, I think, is it? Jack. Well, I don't know how Steve long Turner. he can kick, but I won't. he should be within range if he's a league player. He's about 45 to 50 metres out. He's within range, all right. It's true. Another goal to Melbourne. Well, what a great effort by the young player there, Steve Turner. A lovely drop punt kick. He would have been under enormous pressure and nervous, of course, and he's put Melbourne further in front. 6-5, 41, Melbourne to Richmond, 
for 8.32 and well, I expected uh, Richmond to bounce away in this quarter, Jack, so it was a very, very good effort in the first uh, four and a half minutes of this term by the Melbourne side. Well, the side that's going to win this game will be the fittest side because as, as the third quarter finishes and the final one starts, these players are going to be absolutely exhausted playing in this 32 degree heat. And they're going to be hotter out there in the middle of the MCG, Pete. There's no breeze at all to give them any respite from it. So it's through Francis now. Richmond will go forward. Putting the ball up high into the forward pocket. Big fella comes out. Roach can't take the mark cleanly. It's on the turf. Been knocked out of the pack too. That's another chance. Hughes gets it out to Flower. Flower up the wing. Balks nicely. Balk Lockman balks again. Gets the ball into the half forward zone. All the big men fly. The little fella's weighed down. Waitman nearly picked it up. There was a chance there for Melbourne. Now it's been hurried out of the pack and toward the half forward flank. Who's going to get there first? A chance for Stretch. Stephen Stretch can't take it with him. It's taken away by Poole. Oh, was it the other one? Piet. Piet now gets it moving out to Egan. Egan gets it down to Lee. Big Lee, no, dropped the mark. Free kick though for holding the man. Well, I'll tell you what, those ruckmen are really going to earn their money today. That's 15 metres. That's not good play by Hughes. As uh, off he goes, he's looking up there for Roach. Roach has got the position. No mark. Oh, that Melbourne defence doing well. Oh, they tripped over his teammate there. Here's a chance for uh, Melbourne to bring it away through Cole. He hooks it out wide. He's looking for Robbie Flower. Now, let's see the brilliance of Flower here. He punches it away. He's still held. That'll be a free kick to Robbie Flower. A very, very clever bit of play by Robbie Flower. Well done, Robert Flower. Move the ball now up very quickly up to the half forward zone. The pass a little bit too long or the lead was too fast, whichever way you want to put it. And the ball out of bounds. Off the hands though, no free kick to the opposition. So a boundary throw in taking place on a half forward flank for Richmond on the outer side of the ground where the Ruckman will be Stewart. He got a tap out the back of the pack. There's a chance for Richmond again. Neil Pierre, but Peter Moore is sitting there and that's a good... Uh Good play by Peter Moore, going down to help Regalo, and there is Regalo on screen on the left foot down towards centre wing, and he finds uh, Cox. Cox gives it across to Newport, and Steve Newport brings it towards uh, full forward looking for Turner. Turner, they put his opponent strong under pressure. Here's a chance now for Melbourne as it's grabbed by Reynolds. Reynolds goes for the hand pass. Oh, coming in to lend a hand is Richards. He's got a ton of pace. He sprints away. He goes for the long drop, but it comes back. Not enough, I don't think. Oh, gee, that was good football, but he just missed and threw for one point. The Demons looking very dangerous in the second term. Richmond 4-8-32, only added one behind for this quarter. Melbourne 6-6-42. They've moved on by 20 points in this term so far. The ball on the turf. Lockman didn't take the mark. Richards is there. Oh, strong stuff. Oh. Got a head out the Bailey. Back to Richards. Richards comes forward. The kick, not a good one. Up towards Strawn. Taken away here by Michael Roberts. Swinging back onto his right foot which isn't isn't his kicking foot down toward the half forward or half back zone for Richmond it travels taken by Landy quickly tackled the ball on the turf it's been picked up here and it's Bailey is it getting the ball now it's Newport number 34 moving into the forward pocket and the mark oh. Oh, through for one behind off the hands or off the foot or off something actually of kicked pool. it through in the air he actually accidentally. Did too. So another point to Melbourne on the board, Ooh. 43 playing 32, and Melbourne Gee. looking dangerous. Oh, they're under pressure, Richmond, they're under all sorts of pressure at the moment, as we see Poole bringing it up to centre-half back, Mark Lee is there, can't take the mark, Hughes is putting him under enormous uh, pressure. Now this is uh, Thornton with the football, onto the left foot he goes, beautiful looking kick to James, well clever play, over to Pickering, Pickering into the open goal, is it his third? It floats... Yes, it's a goal. Three goals. Beautiful play by Stephen James over to Pickering. And Melbourne are still in front. 6-7-43. But Richmond are a little bit closer. 5-8-38. Yes, that was a good play by James. Hooking the ball back to Pickering. Must have got the call from him, of course. Or he knew where he was. It's James on camera now. Got the ball down. Very, very clever play. And uh, resulting in naturally what the coach and the rest of the Richmond supporters would... It was a great effort, a goal. They needed that too because, as we said before, they under a fair bit of pressure from Melbourne. Centre bounce. Lee gets the bounce, favours him a little bit, gets it down toward the... or still in the square, toward the half-forward zone. A little bit of basketball goes on. The ball forced upfield now, and the Richmond defence under a fair amount of pressure. That looked like Egan who got the ball out. But this is Stephen Stretch, a new player for the Melbourne Football Club now. Thought of a hand pass to Moore, going for the short pass oh, and a ill-directed pass, not a good one. Thornton now going for a hand pass out to Palm. Palm tried to get around the tackle, was well caught, but the umpire hasn't penalised him. Francis picks up for Richmond. 
he hooks it back and taken by Stewart. Stewart looking for a short pass back in the centre. Michael Roberts is there. He gets a hand pass Murphy again. And now Richmond through Strawn come forward. Down to Roach. Roach up. Yes. Umpires paid the mark. Yes, umpires paid the mark. That was uh, Thornton who kicked that long kick down to Roach. So, I don't know whether he, put the, he did pay the mark. He did, I don't know whether he held it long enough, but he was under a lot of pressure, Jack. I thought he paid the mark. He yeah. did pay the mark, yeah. but uh, still... It was a good effort. Roach, as usual, in front. Great player. Regalo's done pretty well today. That's been a terrific contest. Now, Roach, one of the great kicks in league football. This could put Richmond back in front if he gets Yes, it. well, we're seeing a terrific game. Let's see if he's as accurate as he normally is. He drops that on. Look at that. Regalo did not have to move. Two goals today for Michael Roach so far. And Richmond move on to 6-8, leading Melbourne by one point. They are, of course, on six goals, seven. Michael Roach on screen, great goal that too, very good goal indeed, a long goal, can kick the ball very well as we all know and he didn't let himself down there, he threaded that one right through the centre, at the centre, we're talking about the centre, we're in the centre of the ground at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, you're on Sevens Big League, all the action from this venue, only one point between the teams, Lee, got a tap, I'll just about give it to him, punched out by Hughes, taken by Francis, Francis gets it down toward that half forward zone and that was a mark to uh, James no the umpire didn't play it, James got it out quickly but the umpire had already blown the whistle and we'll see a bounce taking place at the half forward, now it's a free kick going Melbourne's way at that half back position, we taken down there on that uh, half back flank by Darrell Burke Burke looking for somewhere to go, Balk's the man on the mark doesn't really know what he's doing I don't think at present, he's trying to gain ground he eventually got the ball to Moore Moore's trying to gain ground too McNilly ran too far, moves it in toward the square now, it's a good looking kick, was it touched for or not? Oh. Oh. Wow, that was great stuff. I thought that Burke, that's one stage, got himself a little bit tangled up, he eventually got the ball out to Moore, Moore took, a, and I reckon took more than the 15 too Peter, took a lot of ground. Eventually got to the half forward zone, let fly with a good kick and put it through. And strangely enough, if he, when he bounced it, if he had have been grabbed then, it is gone. holding the ball, of course. But uh, it was a brilliant piece of play and uh, starting off with uh, Daryl Burke from the half-back flank. But that is exactly what Melbourne needed, a bit of inspirational play, some good shepherding down there by Reynolds at full forward as well. Send a bounce with the time clock just past the 12 minute mark of the second term on Sevens Big League. The ball moved by Wilson out to the half forward flank for Melbourne. Running in the shadow of that light stand. It, it runs toward the boundary line and that's where it will finish. And we'll see a boundary throw in taking place on the half forward flank. Melbourne members side of the ground. I think the players then were quite happy that it went over the line, Jack. Yeah, they're all getting into the shadow of the light stand. <laughs> <laughs> Start off and see that in football, do you? Dale Waitman's been replaced. He hasn't been in the play at all so far, so that's not surprising as we see John Anir getting it across there to Lockman. Lockman over there to Roberts. Oh, he's under pressure. There's, uh, Thornton was caught with the ball. Oh, brilliant play. But it comes out to, oh, to Palm. Palm with a hand pass over there to Lockman. Lockman to Thornton. Thornton gets it straight to the Melbourne player. That looks like Newport, it is. Newport brings it towards half forward. Oh, up they go. Nearly a mark. Not paid. Play on as Peart grabs it. Peart runs towards centre wing. Neil Peart onto the left foot. He goes a driving kick looking for James. Up he goes. Couldn't take the mark. Nigel Cole hotly pressing him. He's got a ton of pace. Ducks back onto the right foot. A little chip pass towards the Stephen Stretch. He's got it on centre wing. He brings it towards half forward. But straight to Trevor Pearl. Who ducks back to take an easy mark. That was bad play there by Stretch. He's got the ball and kicked it in anywhere. Poole getting a hand pass into Strawn. Strawn hasn't got a lot of pace and got caught by his lack of pace on that occasion. The ball on the turf. Shoveled out of the pack. Roberts breaks through. Loses possession. Picked up by Wilson. He goes out. A good pass too. And it's Ted Fitch going goalward. Ted Fitch is going to be shepherded through there by Turner. Tur he straightens up. He shoots and he's missed it. I think he's missed it. Oh, he could have kept going. You know the funny thing too, he could have run, he could have given himself a better angle and everything. There was no one near. Some beautiful shepherding went on by his teammate behind there. And he could have straightened up, he could have run right in, he could have done whatever he liked, but he just panicked a little bit and he put it offline. As we see the scoreboard, 7-8 Melbourne, Richmond 6-8, one goal the difference. Peter McCormack straight down the ground, but Big Moore's there for Melbourne. Oh, and so was uh, Danny Hughes for Melbourne. Lee asking why didn't he get a free kick for the push in the back for the umpire not having any. Hughes gone short. 
Down his teammate too, and this will be a shot by Grinter. That's nice piece of play. A tremendous play there by uh, Hughes because he walked back to take his kick watching the play instead of turning his back on it, Jack, and then he saw the loose man and put his teammate within distance. Well, Grinter is within distance, about 50 metres it would be. Take a good kick. What is it? It's a Melbourne goal for mine. Melbourne kick another one. Lovely kick there by uh, Grinter. Melbourne have moved two goals in front. 8-8, eight, eight, total of 56, leading Richmond. 6-8, 44, and that is his first goal. Well, it's been a seesawing game. We're 15 minutes into it now. We're in the second term on Seven's Big League by 15 minutes and a few seconds. Entertaining game of football. 6-8, playing 8-8. Eight, eight. And the umpires today, Howlett and Hinton, doing quite a good job. The ball about to be put down now. Lee and Moore. Lee got the tap. Batterson's kick, not a good one. Straight up in the air. Stewart's under it. Oh, Can't well take done. the mark. Been hurried down out of the centre, down toward the half forward zone. Egan has a shot. Oh boy, a running shot by Philip Egan. And he slammed it through, and Richmond replied very, very quickly. They've moved on to 7 8. A total of 7 8. Does, does that add up? Yes, 7 8 50 to Melbourne, 8 8 56. Well, you can't get much better than what we're watching, Peter. No, well, that was brilliant play. A little bit of luck involved as the ball was uh, kicked hurriedly out. And Egan was luck's of fortune. He was sitting there waiting for it. But uh, Phil Egan, well, he looks as though he might develop into a pretty good centre player this year. At the centre bounce. Six points between the teams. Melbourne leading. Picked up by Thornton. The kick hurried downfield. Pickering had the hands it. Couldn't hold it. Now it's been shot out there at the left foot by Newport into the half forward flank area. No mark is taken. That looked like uh, Richards couldn't break away. Francis picks up for Richmond. His hand pass comes back toward Grinter. Grinter in all sorts of bother. Broke the tackle. Got a left hand, a left foot to it. I live. And he's kicked another one. Lucky he kicked it. Should have gone for a hand pass. Yes. But he broke the tackle well. Saw the goals in his sight. Let fly. And another good goal to Melbourne. Well, I'll tell you what, he'd be straight off the ground if he hadn't have kicked it because Helen Johnson was standing on his own, screaming for the hand pass, all on his own, 20 metres out, and he was ignored. But Rodney Grinter, all the same, kicked the goal and uh, put it through, and a very handy goal to the Demons. They're all handy. Back at the centre bounce with 17 minutes gone now, the second term on Seven's Big League from the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The co-tenants Melbourne and Richmond doing battle. There's only going to be one winner, of course. Lee taps it down, taken by Wilson, ducked the head, and he didn't really get tackled. He got a free kick out of it, though. His hand pass put his teammate Burke in trouble. His left foot kick comes off the side of the boot a bit, picked up by Peart. His left foot kick wobbles out toward Pickering, got the front berth, but can he get away from Lyon? Got the ball tapped away from him, picked up here. Pickering looking for support, got it too. A hand pass to Thornton. Thornton gets it moving down toward Roach. Roach out in front of Rigolo. Neither take the mark, it's on the turf. Here's a chance now for Richmond. Here's a chance at Schuster's. Balks nicely. He's going to have a shot. No, he's come back to Roach. He's blocked. Oh, he's caught. Hot in the ball. He didn't know. He didn't know he was about to be tackled. He's going to have a shot at goal. He played on. He was caught. I wonder, if he, I wonder if he felt that the ball wasn't uh, 15 metres or whether he felt he was clear. I think that was probably more Well, he like was it. going to play on. There it is. But that we, was we saw it on replay there, well, but it's certainly a uh, free kick. That was Batterston getting it out of defence right down towards the half-back line. But, oh, what a... It was bad play by Michael Roach because it was beautiful play by Eustace who ducked around on the boundary and gave it to him. But oh, you do these things on the spur of the moment, I suppose. As we see Turner against Lee. Lee got it down to Roberts. Roberts head down towards half forward where Pickering is proving a real danger up there on the half forward line. He's going for the short pass. It's a low step pass. It's a lovely pass. It's a lovely lead too by Michael Roach but he's on a very very acute angle. I think he'd know the angle wouldn't he Pete being a, I'm playing well, on this He's a great kick as some idiot throws a can out in the ground. Yeah. Have a brain like a peanut. I don't think it'd be that big Pete. Here's a shot from the forward pocket by Michael Roach, who had a little bit of a misunderstanding there a moment ago. It's a very tight shot. It's a... Oh, hit the post again. That's his second. That's his second, Richmond's yeah, third. Yeah. Uh, it's twice he's hit the post. In the first term at the scoreboard end, he hit the post, and there, that very tight shot, he's hit the post again. So Richmond with three posters now. Their score is 7-9-51, but the leading score at this stage is 9-8-62 in Melbourne's favour. The short pass comes out, or kick in from Francis. Can't take it. Flower being dragged off the ball. Grinter's hand passes good. 
given out here. Burks hand passes to Johnson. Johnson's got a bit of pace. He's going to use it too. He'll hand pass on to move the ball further into the half forward zone. Another chance for Turner. Turner goes short. A beautiful pass. And a well placed kick has found his teammate who's playing with confidence now. And this is Teddy Fidge with the short haircut. Gee. Where are those blonde locks gone, Jack? Have a look at him. Oh, well, the thing was that he's going to save him. He doesn't have to buy any combs. Teddy Fidge, about 45 to 50 metres out. Very mature play by Stephen Turner then, Jack, too. Well, it'll bring up the result. So now it's drifting a bit. Has it drifted too far? Yes, it has only one behind. So Ted Fitch can't find the, the goal so far. Missing that shot. 9-9-63 to 7-9-51. It's Melbourne leading by two goals. We've just gone past the 20-minute mark of the second term. And Lee trying to take the mark. Can't do so. Ball tapped down. It's with Flower. He's bumped aside. Hand pass comes back quickly. Punched on by Batterston. He could have taken it. It's been picked up here. And Richmond player in Piat picking up and kicking to the wing position where Bailey does a bit of pushing out from the back. Wasn't caught. Another ball comes to the turf again. Richmond under a bit of pressure now. They're trying to pick up. It's picked up by Thornton. Thornton can see Francis. He finds him too. It's a good pass. Francis, I thought, would have looked for Roberts. Yes, he does. Robert plays on. He goes into the half-forward zone. A little bit slow to get the boot to it. He drives in towards goal and he's off target. Only one behind. Michael Roberts has uh, done very, very well so far in this game. His handball has been excellent and he looks as though he'd be a very... That's eight handballs, is it? Eight kicks he's had, Michael Roberts. So... Uh, that's a good effort so far in this game, in his first game for the Tigers. There's a big mark, or nearly a big mark there to uh, Pickering. A hurry kick comes up towards centre wing well where done. the mark has been taken there by Poole. Poole gets it to Peart, who's doing pretty well. Onto the left foot goes Neil Peart towards the boundary line. It's still in play as Landy casually strolls after that one. I think he got a surprise when it stayed in. He's on the left foot. Oh, could be a collision. No, as Hughes gets it, hooks it back. It was a very strong game being played by Danny Hughes. There's Bailey. He never takes a backward step either. He got hurt then, though. He was, he's hurt. He's still down. It takes a lot to put Bailey down. It's a free kick going to Richmond's way as Bailey is still on the ground. And I think he's hurt because he's a pretty tough boy, Brett Bailey. Free kick, nevertheless, has gone down to Johnny Anir. About uh, 40 metres out from goal directly in front. Well, Roach is right down on the goal line in case the kick drops short. It's a near's kick coming in now. He's hooked it badly, though. Didn't give it much chance to go through for goal for that kick. And it's only through 4-1 behind. So 7-11 now, the Richmond total, which is still 10 points in arrears of the Melbourne score. 9-9 to 7-11. Richmond uh, trailing by the 10 points. A good kick, too, by Regolo right up into the centre square. Francis tried, oh, sorry it wasn't Francis, it was Wilson tried to tap it on, taken by Stewart, a hand pass comes out, there's a chance for Lockman of Richmond, he moves the ball into the half forward zone where Ania came out to meet it, picks it up nicely, looking for support but can't find any, he eventually swings it around and finds James, James was thinking of giving a hand pass back but he's been Too told slow. by Ania to go back and take your kick. Too slow to get rid of it. You know, he's got a hand pass back to now and they're in trouble, that looked like... That man got the hand pass out. The fans screaming for free kicks. It was like a shoveled hand pass coming out there. And the Melbourne side now looking for that flower in the hands of the trainers. It doesn't look too well. France is picking up now. Looking for a teammate. Gone very short and finds Roberts. Flower calling for the trainers. Must be injured out there, Peter. Roberts drives yeah. into the forward pocket. And a good mark. What's that, Pete? I was watching Flower. I reckon he's copped one in the ribs. He's holding. His, don't tell me he's going to have another year like that. He's holding his ribs. Let's hope he hasn't got cracked ribs or something well, like he's that. He's going into the uh, into the change room straight away. He's not looking for the seat on the bench. He's going into the change rooms, and the doctor's being summoned to come and give him some attention. Well, it's a damn tragedy to see him go up. They need Robbie Flower fit and playing a full year because well, we'll only wait and see what it is. But it is a tragedy. Fair Flower, not too sure. He's going up the wrong race there by the look of it, but. Uh, Back to James, having the shot for goal, it's trying to get back but can't do so and only one behind. So the Melbourne fans will be, as you were just saying, Pete, well, very a, disappointed. I think as a football lover, you hate to see uh, champion players. Gary Ablett's out of it for a long time and uh, I hate seeing Flower out because I love watching him play. Scoreboard 7-12, Richmond, Melbourne on 9-9, 54-63. There's Eustace getting it in there towards Palm. Ty Johnson brilliantly done onto the left foot. Now he's looking out there for Stephen Stretch against Egan. Egan had the sit on him. Zantuck fumbles that one over to Johnson. Johnson a hand pass to Bailey. 
Bailey seems to have recovered from that heavy knock a moment ago. He's looking for Rhino as he's known in Richards. He's got a ton of pace, Richards. Let's see if he can get away. Look at that pace. As I said, tremendous acceleration. And he goes for the long kick at goal. And he's put it out of bounds on the forward. Boy, can he sprint? Well, it wasn't really good disposal. It was a great piece of work to break away, as he did. But he should have got the ball somewhere around about the goal square, not having that dashing shot at goals he did and putting it out of bounds it's gone out of bounds a long way from the goals too it's uh, he's missed the goals by the proverbial mile but it's still it's still exciting to watch him play so from the back pocket Richmond will bring the ball back in round about their half back flank area it's going to land where Big Lee got into the pack couldn't take the mark it's come to turf Eustace is in there for Richmond tried to get it out of the pack but a free kick will go his way he was tackled too high Mark Eustace looking downfield, Pickering's leading toward the flank, the ball is driven in that direction but he can't take it, he picks up nicely now, got a hand pass working and oh. Landy caught, that was a good tackle, that was a great tackle. And as we see Alan Johnson come away with a football, a lovely kick out wide to Ted Finch, now what will he do with this one, he's got it, he ducks onto the left, will he go back onto the right, no he goes for the little pass to Peter Moore, beautiful play Ted Finch, but oh gee Alan Johnson's having a great day up around that centre area Jack. That yeah, was a great piece of football, that was. 11 kicks to Johnson and a number of handballs as well. So he's having a, a top day as we see Peter Moore going for his second goal of the game. He stabs at no. this one. I think he's missed. Oh, snuck in. I thought by the goal umpire he'd missed it, but he has got that one in. A low skimmer and a handy one too. Melbourne, 10-9, 69. Lead Richmond, 7-12, 54. I think Peter Moore got much as a shock as I did when the two hands went up there from the goal umpire because I thought that at Mitch from where we were sitting, the umpire came right across to his left hand goal post and I was just about, I would have put money on it that he'd missed but the umpire said a goal. Pickering coming off, he's kicked three goals. Yeah, well maybe he's exhausted. I think I'd be exhausted too, had to play out there today. Walsh coming on for Richmond in place of Pickering. The ball back in the centre. The game at the MCG, 69 to Melbourne, 54 to Richmond. And That's a good good. game of football it is. There's a free kick holding the man. No, the umpire said no. So it's going to be a free kick. Uh, we'll be paid out of it now and we'll go to, to David Park. Picking, Pickering's getting treatment there, I think around the hip area from the trainers, Jack. Most likely a brew. Oh, good mark to Mark Lee. He'll be looking for Big Roach now. I wouldn't be surprised if the lead is there. It is now. Roach leading out in front of Rigolo. The hands are up. The fist comes in to spoil. And here looking for the free kick and being paid. It was being held, didn't have the ball. And John Anir will take a shot at goal for Richmond. And hopeful that he uh, does better than he did on his last attempt, which he hooked badly. This one is on the other side of the ground, so he's got more chance of kicking it. Johnny Anir, not a good looking style, the ball on its way and the umpire said he's consistent, he's missed again. I'm very impressed with the, uh, oh, that's, a, that's a smart comment Jack, consistent, he's missed again. <laughs> well, Got onto it a bit late but as we see uh, Regalo who's doing an excellent job there at full back on Michael Roach, a very disciplined game, there's Lee, was he interfered with, I thought he staged that one a little bit Jack. Well uh, that he may have done, he may have put one over the young player who was competing against. Lee going into the forward pocket, looking for Roach again. Regalo! Oh. Wait, did he mark it? Oh, no, he, he didn't. Did. No, he evidently hasn't. And here, getting a hand pass back, back along the flank. Was Walsh. A flying shot by Walsh, it just came on. Here's a goal. <laughs> Off the boodle, Andy. And through for a goal to Richmond. So Richmond would have loved that one. 8-13-61, the Richmond total. Melbourne, 10-9-69, you're on sevens, big league. Well, uh, Melbourne have looked very, very good, but Richmond have wasted a few opportunities up forward. That was a handy goal. Good play by Philip Walsh. He was looking for a short pass. No one left, so he hooked it back. And, uh, of course, it was capitalised on a good mark taken there by Landy, and he popped it through for an easy goal. But I'm not sure which way this is going to go, Jack, at this stage. No, well, uh, who is Pete? No one will know. Tap down by Lee to Roberts. Roberts can't get it out on the second attempt. Dives in after Neither, but the umpire will be forced to bounce again. I know one thing, we're going to have uh, 40 very, very tired footballers at the end of the game. You can back that in. That's about the only certainty we can find today, that one, because they'll be just about exhausted. In fact, they'll be nearly exhausted by three-quarter time because it's been a fairly hectic game of football. 
Up day fly, the ball's tapped down, hurried out by Zantuck on the left oh. foot toward the half forward flank. Pack has come back toward the wing. Francis first to it, going to get a good break here too, I think. Going back onto his right foot, going back in toward the centre, looking for Stewart. Stewart will get in a bit late, but he took the mark, played on quickly too. Good piece of football. The hand pass comes down to Egan, but he couldn't accept it. Here's another chance for a Melbourne player. Looks like Bailey again getting the ball. No, it's not. It's been kicked up there by Richards. Up to the half forward zone. More up very high. Can't take the mark. It's on the turf. He follows through. That could have been a free kick Richmond's way. Wasn't paid. Moore gets the boot to it, but he's off target. In fact, he's off line altogether. Out of bounds on the full and Richmond's free kick. Yes, and uh, Peter Moore doing a lot of uh, resting on the forward line today. And Danny Hughes is taking a lot of the workload on the ball and uh, well he's a real goer gee look he does some good heavy work there's Daryl Burke coming away with a football he centers it that was unselfish football beautiful football Daryl Burke because he saw Reynolds lead out from full court he could have blazed away himself but he centered the ball and it's been rewarded with a good mark by Reynolds who now lines up for his fourth goal well that's disciplined football Peter Reynolds going from about 25 meters out point blank range as Peter told you and I think he's missed it oh well, that was nearly a gift, but oh. he didn't accept it. So it wasn't an Easter Sheesh. gift for Melbourne. He missed that one badly. That would have been a handy one. Yeah. As I said before, they're all handy, and I reckon he should have kicked that. He's kicked the first three up to quarter time, the only three Melbourne had, and he's missed that sitter. Well, that hurts the player who kicks it down to him, you know, because if they do all the hard work and get it to full forward, and they miss easy ones like that, it's disheartening. As we see, a good mark taken by Philip Egan. He gets it out towards Johnny Anir, who's playing well. He gets it looking for Philip Walsh. Oh, no, Landy, it was up forward. It's grabbed there by Gary Lyon. He hooks it towards half forward. Now, who's there for Melbourne? It's punched away by Peart. The ball comes loose to Egan. He's got a couple of bad bounces. Batterston on the left foot. And the mark has been taken. Is it Teddy Fidge? Yep. I think it is. He and Grinder even look alike down there. Yes, but they this do. This time, it's a smaller player in Ted Fitz, certainly within kicking distance, he's about 45 metres out directly in front. As the breeze doesn't seem to be affecting the game at all today, they're kicking at either end with good length in the kicks. Teddy Fitz should get this, as Peter said. Drop punt on its way, it looks good too. Another goal to Melbourne. So Melbourne on 76, Richmond 61 on seven's big league. Yes, and it's bad luck for the Demons that uh, the player on screens uh, brother is not out there today John Fidge I th thought this year would be the year for John Fidge a very very promising player but uh, injuries of course have kept him out of today's game we're seeing an excellent game 11 10 Melbourne Richmond 8 13 and uh, well it's very close to the halftime siren at the centre bounce as we approach the 32 minute mark of the second term on sevens big league the ball tapped out by Lee taken by a near and moved down to the half forward zone Good defensive work by the Melbourne side. They've been very disciplined down there today. The ball is shoveled out of the pack, and there's the halftime siren. On seven's big league at halftime from the Melbourne cricket ground. Melbourne 11 goals, 10, 76. Richmond 8 goals, 13, 61. On Sevens Big League, the start of the second half of the game at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The temperature has just moved up to 35 degrees Celsius and the players out there will be wishing to heavens at the game at end soon because it must be about 40 out there in the middle of the MCG. The ball kicked into the half forward zone and it's Richards trying to get after. He's caught with possession. The umpire said holding the ball and Richmond will take the free kick on that half back line and take a bit of pressure off their defenders. They move the ball with a hand pass to Lockman. He gives it away once again. And the Tigers, through McCormack, bring it to a half-back flank where the mark is taken by Johnny Anir. Two ex-Magpies there combining. Of course, Craig Stewart is another Collingwood, ex-Collingwood player out there as well. There's the ball thumped away. In the first half, it's uh, Stephen Stretches, the player, trying to keep it in. Number 18 for Melbourne. In the first half of the game, we saw a very, very even contest with Melbourne just edging ahead before half-time. But Jack... At that stage, we had no idea who was going to win this game. No, well, Melbourne do lead at present by 15 points over Richmond, and Richmond will have some trouble pegging them back because as this game progresses, each player, of course, will be the energy to be sapped by the tremendous heat out there. So the 17, that 15-point lead would be very, very handy for Melbourne. The ball down towards the half-forward zone, out to Zantuck, cleverly played out too. Gave it to Richard, he gives it over once again, and the new player stretch going in for Melbourne but kicked wildly once again or very too long I suppose you'd say for his teammate in Gritter's been picked up by Francis of Richmond who's played quite well got tripped on that occasion and he will take a free kick 
but all I suppose he could do was to trip him and bring him back. Now France is playing very dangerous football here, playing right across the goals, but luckily enough he's found Stewart, his teammate at the half-back zone. Not a very long kick coming round toward Egan. Egan could lose possession here. He has the ball in front of him. He's met by Peter Moore. And the ball is over the boundary line. We'll see a boundary throw in taking place on the half forward line. It's the half forward line for Melbourne. Boundary throw in now with Moore. Opposing Stewart. The ball comes to the front of the pack. Taken and hurriedly kicked by Peart. Up to the half forward zone. It floats badly. And a good mark taken there by Gary Lyon of Melbourne. Well, he'll be pleased, young Gary Lyon, that Michael Pickering has gone off with an injured hip because uh, Pickering had kicked three goals early. But Lyon has done a few nice things and looks very promising. Here's Stephen Stretch as he gives a hand pass beautifully across there. Into the open goal goes Shane Zanta and the interchange player onto the ground has slammed it through for a goal, a lovely goal to Shane Zantuck. So the Demons move further ahead. They've moved on to 12 goals, 10, 82, leading Richmond 8-13-61. We must also tell you that Melbourne lost the services of Robbie Flower during the second quarter. He'd been playing very well for Melbourne. He's gone off, he went straight into the medical rooms. We assume he's injured his ribs or something like that. He's sitting on the bench down there now, and I don't think you'll see him take any further part in the game. Bad blow for Melbourne after his bad season last year with injury. Back at the centre. Richmond 61, Melbourne 82 on Sevens Big League. The game at the MCG. The all the action. Coming to you from this hot, very hot venue this afternoon. Rough and tumble football in the centre and we'll see a bounce taking place a few metres on the centre line or from the centre line favouring Richmond. Big pack around the ball pit. Yes, uh, take a miracle to get it out of there Jack at the moment. They'll be looking for the big punch away. Moore actually got it down to Newport. Newport good football to get his uh, boot to that. Here's Zantuck. He's a real little goer. I'm surprised he didn't start in the side as a matter of fact. There he is on the left foot. He oh, kicks it beautifully to Reynolds. That was great football. Reynolds had made a lovely lead. He's already kicked three goals on Peter McCormack. A chance for his fourth. And what great play that was by Zanta. Great play. Reynolds kicked three goals, the Melbourne's first three goals in the first quarter on Peter McCormack. Going for his fourth goal. He missed a very easy one in the second quarter. I think he's missed that one too. Yes, he was a little bit further out on that occasion and missed. But the one he missed in the second term was only from about 30 metres. So there he is on screen, or he was. Now France is kicking in, is it? Doesn't matter who kicks him in these days, Jack. No, Peter France is kicking in. Lee underneath the ball, tried to tap it on, couldn't make contact. Morris tries to do the shepherding for Wilson. Wilson going for a funny little pass round the corner. Has found Richards, but he couldn't quite hold it. That's a funny looking hand pass. That was a throw. Grinder gets a oh. hand pass back to. Oh, Cole got hit. Down they go. Players come in now. The hand passes are wild and a free kick going out there will be taken by Nia. One of the great things of Melbourne's play today, and uh, John Northey would be wrapped in, is the tackling. Their tackling has been tremendous. Uh, oh, there it is again by Reynolds as he went in. And uh, luck's of fortune because Johnny Anir was there and he brings away with the football out towards Poole. Poole and Alan Johnson. Johnson probably the best man in the ground in the first half. Oh, there's uh, Neil Peart almost getting caught over to Poole. Who had a great year last year, Trevor Poole. Here's Waitman who was interchanged at the end of the first quarter. He had a very, very disappointing first quarter. He gives it to Michael Roberts. He's been an excellent player today. He kicks wide. He's looking out there for Stewart. He's bowled. Oh, I don't know about that one. I thought it was in the side. Well, I was just looking at that, that uh, play of Richmond. They've gone from the wing across into the centre, come back to the half forward flank on the member side. Not very positive football as far as I could see. I thought it was very poor football. Now Melbourne will try and hurry it forward through Zanta. At a very open half forward line. Fidge is calling for it in the forward pocket, but it's not being delivered there. It's coming over the back now. There is a chance for Melbourne if they can break away. That was Richards being caught, but the ball was held to him. Melbourne 12-11-83, Richmond 8-13-61. We're nearly six minutes into the third term. This is umpire. And the, and the temperature has just risen to 36 degrees oh. Celsius outside. Boy. So what it is in the middle of that MCG, I, would, I daren't think. Those players will be feeling the pinch. They're feeling it now, I know, but come the final turn they'll be just about out of all energies a push out said the umpire and I think it's Phil Egan going to take this one it is Egan gives a hand pass across there to Lockman Michael Lockman had a year in South Australia a former under 19 player here at Richmond oh good play by Bailey over Zantuck has really livened up the Melbourne side as he kicks it towards half forward Peart sets himself can't take the mark in they go after it, trying to get it out of Steve Turner. Kicked a lovely goal 
in one of his first kicks in league football, Steve Turner, ex-West Aussie, number 41 on screen. The ball is out. Goal, it that was one? a lovely long drop punt as we see the ball thrown in. There's uh, Stewart down to Waitman. They need Waitman firing Richmond if they're going to win this game. He kicks it out wide looking for young Thornton. Came from Brunswick this year to the Tigers. He's oh. been one of their better players. An attempted trip there that was as the kick comes down to Roach. Hughes also there. Now it's Peter Moore. Oh, brilliant play. Thrashes his way through. Now it's a chance for Richmond. Michael Roberts, play on good umpiring to let it go. And here's the man of the game in my book, Alan Johnson. A long kick right up towards the centre wing. I think he just pulled a hamstring, Johnson. Well, there's Turner with the hand pass. Back it comes to Batterston. You see if we can pick that up as we see Batterston kick it wide. He's looking out there for Teddy Fitch. Which way will it bounce? Oh, cleverly done, Fitch. But France is off. Held by the shorts. The umpire missed that one. Play on now, said the umpires. In they go after it as Thornton gets, uh, no, Lockman, I should say, dives on the ball, number 27. And let's see if Alan Johnson In the is, centre, it looks like a well, groin. He's got the magic spray in the, in the groin area. Looks like a, he's strained a groin. He's been playing very well too for Melbourne. He's nearly the best man on the ground. It looks like he may have to come off onto the interchange bench and get some treatment. But Lockman of Richmond going after the ball. He didn't really think that was out. The umpire was right there, so I can't argue with him. Well, he's, he is limping a bit, and uh, he's going back to where? Uh, so Alan Johnson pocket. down to the back pocket. Back pocket. Yes, he's gone to the back mm. pocket. Uh, so that'll be interesting. That'll be a shocking blow if they lose him, because he's had a tremendous day. Well, Melbourne, the foot, Melbourne Football Club having a good day so far, but they don't count their chickens before they're hatched. They'll have to wait and see what's the result at the end of the game. From Batterson, the ball comes to Fiji, hooks it back overhead, it's going to go close. No, it won't go, won't break right. And uh, another one behind going to the Melbourne total. So Melbourne now 12 goals, 11, sorry, 12, 12, 84. Richmond 8, 13, 61 with the time clock, eight and a half minutes into the third term on Sevens Big League. Philip Walsh takes the march, swings back on that left foot, will drive the ball up toward the centre wing. They don't seem to be kicking very long. He's looking for big Mark Lee, but Egan takes the mark for Richmond on the wing position. Egan can see a short pass to Roberts. Johnson's come downfield, away from Roberts, and a kick from Egan straight over the boundary line, and the free kick will be taken by Gary Lyon of Melbourne. Now he's on the half-back flank in the shadows of the member stand. That'd be a good place to be playing this afternoon. Gary Lyon coming away with the ball, coming up toward the ball. about four Richmond players in that bunch. They could have wrapped it up. Walsh tried to carry it through. Did well, too, to get it out to Egan. Egan gets a hand pass into Thornton. Thornton picking up now. Got a chance to drive in toward Roach. Roach is leading. He's going to have a shot at goal. He kicks long. It's there, I think. A good goal. That's a good goal kicked by Ron Thornton for his second. And Richmond coming back slightly, but they have a long way to go. Yes, a tremendous goal there by uh, Ron Th Thornton. I said earlier in the quarter that he came across to Richmond from Brunswick. He's been tremendously impressive uh, today in his first game for the Tigers. He's got a ton of pace, he's got a lot of courage and he's kicked two great goals and that's the one they badly needed. They needed something to lift them because Melbourne were looking very, very good. At the centre bounds, as the time clock ticks around to the 10 minute mark of the third term on Sevens Big League. This is the vital quarter of course, the third term always is the vital quarter in football in my way of thinking. Lee got it down, they can't get it out of the pack yet. Big pack forming up, rough and tumble, and the umpire has decided a bounce would be the best thing to do. But there's another big pack around the ball, it's right in the centre as you see, you can see the bounce ring there. Well, the best thing that could happen as far as Melbourne is concerned is they get a goal straight away to make up for that one, because if Richmond get a bit of a run on, they get the sniff of victory, Melbourne might find it hard. Well, Melbourne's second quarter was good, in which they kicked eight goals, six to four goals, six. But Richmond, through an air, can take the ball away from the Melbourne forward zone. He's looking for a lead out there on the wing position. Can't find many, though. He's kicking up toward the wing itself, where Landy comes out. Can't pick it up. There's a chance for Melbourne to go forward. Waitman chips in. Another chance for Moore to crash his way through. He got a hand pass out in the general direction of Cole, but the ball went over the boundary line for a throw-in. It's on the half-forward flank for Melbourne on the outer side of the ground. Yes, in the first term, Richmond led by nine points after kicking 4-7 to 3-4. But then Melbourne in the second term kicked eight goals, six to Richmond's four goals, six and had a 15-point break at the half-time siren. This is Mark Eustace with the ball, the ex-bomber, up towards half-forward for Richmond. Lee, oh gee, Hughes has done a lot of good heavy work today. Oh, well done. He's a tremendous <laughs> team player. There's a hurry kick by Batterston out the stretch. Stretch runs towards centre wing. He's got a toe. Oh. He tends to overdo it at times over to Zantuck. Zantuck. 
a little kick oh Johnston's not moving well at all no doubt he's hurt that groin uh, uh, Jack and he looks a disconsolate player after being best man on the ground in the first half he's not moving too well at all I'd be well the only man I can see down there is Daryl Cox they could replace him with and of course he's a bigger player so they might be tempted to leave Johnston on as he charges out after his opponent there in David Palmer. But, but I thought they'd be better to put line. him down in the forward pocket where he might get a bit of a rest and a bit of a break. But Maybe, maybe put Fidge up there. Or maybe so, but anyhow, John Northey would know what he's doing. Coaching Melbourne for the first time against his old club, Richmond, and be happy the way things are going at present. As Palm being tackled, went in possession, but uh, spinning out his Waitman, got a long hand pass over toward Thorns and Jew, that was a quick one. Really looked like a throw. Lockman gets it working up to the half forward zone for the Tigers, but the bounce is not favouring the Tigers. Been picked up by Cole, who hand passes into the centre. The hand pass comes back to Cole, and from the centre, Cole goes in toward Reynolds. Reynolds dives, can't take the mark. Yeah. It comes to ground. Waitman does the ball thing. Waitman gets it away. His hand pass comes to look like a uh, Lockman again, he moved it up toward the centre of the ground, here's a chance now for Stretch, no he's beaten by his own teammate, Zantuck has the ball, he's looking for a lead, Reynolds should drop back away from McCormack, Zantuck kicks into toward the goal square and it's off the hands of McCormack and through for one behind. He was stiff not to get a free kick a moment ago either, uh, Reynolds, Reynolds. What he, oh, was he ever, he got up and remonstrated, I thought he could have got that one, three goals the difference, 12-13 Melbourne, Richmond 9-13, the umpire's doing a good job all the same, Howlett and Hinton, two young umpires and doing well, this player has done well too, that's Neil Peart screaming down the ground, centre wing, up towards Lee, Hughes has done a magnificent job giving away inches to Lee, Newport, hand pass back to Nigel Colt, he's a great improved player, his brother of course, Michael, twin brother plays for Geelong, Nigel Cole, that was a good. bad kick as it goes straight there to Lockman, Lockman with a hand pass over to Peart, Peart on the left foot down towards full forward. Michael Roach flies from behind over the top of Regalo. But give Regalo his due, Jack. Every time the ball has come down there, he's been in front. Yes, Regalo couldn't have done any, any better than he did uh, there, except he, had he, the was, sit. he was only just a, a little bit underneath the ball and Roach had the fly on him. But uh, he did the right thing. He was in front and he's done very well on Michael Roach. He's a hard man to beat. I'll now, say. Roach is within kicking distance, about 55 metres out. 50 metres to 55. Drop punt on its way. Richmond need this, and Richmond have it too. A goal to Roach, and a very handy one indeed. Well, that, uh, this is the danger period, I, I think, Jack, as far as Melbourne are concerned. It's two goals the difference. We've got uh, in favour of Melbourne. Uh, Richmond just edging their way back into it. There was a four-goal break, uh, break a couple of minutes ago, and now Mel Richmond are just starting to get their game together. They must score one or two quick goals, Melbourne, to get the momentum going again, because Richmond are just starting to look dangerous. Well, we're getting toward the 15-minute mark. We're not quite there yet. We're in the third term on Seven's Big League, of course, and the ball in the centre of the Melbourne cricket ground, which is going to be pretty hot out there. It's 35 at present. Ball kicked high, the umpire said holding the ball. So now he's played the advantage rule and Melbourne going forward. Who's just streaming downfield? It looks like Burke. Burke coming out of the half forward zone. He got a hand pass into Grinter. Grinter's in trouble. Hooks one back toward the goals, going through for one behind only. And that would be a Melbourne uh, benefit, I would say. But that could have been really been a goal to Melbourne because he Burke had a chance to bring that ball right down to the half forward zone and that hurried snap could have been marked by a Melbourne forward, but such was not the case. 86 playing 73. It's 13 points now in Melbourne's favour. Still anybody's game here on Sevens Big League. And Richmond coming forward. Looked like Eustace booting that one up toward the half-forward zone. Cole's there. Can he get it though? Here's Waitman. Waitman into the open spaces looking for Roach. He can't get it back properly. Roach comes out in front of Rodolo. It's a thump in the back but continues playing. The ball pushed on to Thornton. Thornton goes forward. It's a Richmond goal. Good piece of work. His third goal, Richmond 11, 13, 79. Only seven points behind Melbourne's 12, 14, 86 on Sevens Big League. Well, some tremendous team play there, Jack. I'm sure you'll agree. Firstly, by Waitman, who tried desperately to get it to Roach on the left foot. Roach came out, playing in front of his opponent, Regalo, on that occasion. Took the ball beautifully, swung onto the right hand, and a lovely hand pass across to Thornton, running past. He's got a ton of pace. 
and the young player from Brunswick slammed it through for his third goal. Tremendous team play by Richmond. As I say, said a moment ago, they're starting to get their game together. Right, we thought that early in the game too, but then Richmond went ahead. See if they can do it again. It's on the turf now. It's Eustace breaking through for Richmond. Loses possession to Johnston, but Eustace follows up again. Gains possession, spins out of trouble nicely. Gets the kick moving down to the half-forward zone. Burke sets it. In fact, he was doing the shepherding for no one in particular, and he should have really contested that ball. And Hughes has given away a 10-metre penalty, 15-metre penalty, and the recipient is Waitman. Well, that's a perfect example of not keeping your eye on the ball by young Darrell Burke, because the only player who looked at the ball was Waitman, and he took the mark. Burke was too busy uh, wrestling and shepherding. Here's a short pass. They've got a loose man there in Lee, unattended, into the open goal. Bang! Undisciplined play by Melbourne, fourth play, and that makes the scoreboard one point the difference. Melbourne lead by one point, 12-14 to Richmond, 12-13. Well, we've said all along, right from the outset today, we said this is going to be a good game of football and we haven't been disappointed. At one stage, we thought Melbourne could take it away when they got to a four-goal break over Richmond, but Richmond had other ideas and they fought their way right back now. And as Peter has just told you, only one point between the teams. 85 playing 86, 17 minutes and 40 seconds into the third term. Seven's big league comes alive once again at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. And believe you me, it must be hot down there. It mustn't be very comfortable for the players. The ball on the turf with an ear. Can't take it. They try to get it out. Picked up by line of Melbourne. Pushes it out. Is a chance for Poole. The ball will bounce for him. Yes, it does. He picks up on the wing position. Swings it around toward Waitman on the half-forward zone. But Thornton chipped in first. And it, no, it was Lockman, was it? Those two, 27 and 37, uh, have been playing quite well. Both played well today. Thornton has three goals to his credit, but they've both done well for, the for their team. One point the difference, Richmond in attack only just, they're on their half forward flank on the outer side, Roberts went in for Richmond but couldn't quite get near the ball before it's thumped over the boundary line, it's on centre wing now and a boundary throw in taking place. I just wish that sometime uh, Richmond would get rid of that yellow sash across the back of their jumper, Jack, it'll be pretty easy to see those numbers, yes, because we, at the moment it's very difficult. Yes, we, we do wish they'd get rid of that sash on their jumper but they won't. There's Johnson. He had a great first half, as I said. I'm sure he's carrying a bit of a groin injury. Hasn't been as dominant in this quarter as he got that one down towards the half forward line. But Melbourne, well, they badly want a, a quick goal or a quick couple of goals to get their momentum up again. There's Peter Moore to do the ruck what, work against Craig Stewart. What I think Melbourne are missing, Peter, when the ball gets down around the goal square, there's no rovers yeah. coming into it. Oh, look at this. This is brilliant play by Richards on the left foot. Maybe this is what they want. That is a tremendous goal by Russell Richards. And the Demons go further in front. They've moved on to 13 goals, 13 goals, 14, a total of 92, leading Richmond 12-13-85. Well, that was well played by Richards there. He now has two to his credit, Russell Richards, and he's done a couple of very dashing things this afternoon. Pete, he's, he's sort of brought the crowd to life, hasn't he? He's, he's great things to he's watch. Done. He's, good, he's very good value from an entertainment point of view, and that was certainly a great goal. Well, he's got great play. pace, Jack. We saw him in the BFL sprint on grand final day, yes. and he nearly won that. So, uh, we well, know maybe, what, maybe so if he can find a bit more pace and a few more goals, Melbourne could take this out. But we, No, it's anyone's game at this stage. And we'll see what happens here. Another bounce in the centre. Nothing going on from that centre bounce. So 92 playing 85 with Melbourne leading Richmond. We're coming toward the 20 minute mark now of the third term. They're on Sevens Big League and a very entertaining game of football to open up season 86 at the oh. MCG. Now here's a chance for Richmond if they get someone into the action. Yes, oh, Roach has run through to Roach. But he's been well backed up by Hughes. And Hughes drives out towards the wing position where a good mark has been taken by Johnson who plays on quickly drives in towards Baddiston this is the fellow they want to liven up around the goals Baddiston pick up a few crumbs and sneak yeah. a few goals but he hasn't done much today has he? You did right Jack uh, they've been one out down there really with uh, Reynolds battling he's looked good at full forward he hasn't converted as much as what he should have but he hasn't had a lot of backup support he's been battling against two and three Richmond players there's a pool getting a hurry kick up in the air it goes. Oh, who's is this? Oh, who wants this? <laughs> oh, Waitman stood the ground. He was the only one who really looked at it. He gets it across there to Lockman. Lockman to Francis. Here come the Tigers again. Peter Francis had a very, very good day. That's a beautiful kick too. Up to Graham Landy. He wants to play on and give it to Roberts. What's this? Yes, over to Michael Roberts. He ducks away on the right foot. Should have gone on to the left. He kicks it high. It should be a punch away here. It is. Stephen James has it taken away by Mark Eustace, his teammate. He's on the boundary line. Oh, lovely hand pass to Waitman. Waitman. Oh, tripped. Tripped. 
Yes, said the umpire. And Dale Waitman is huge. Was it huge that charged through at 100 mile an hour? But uh, Waitman will take this kick right in front of goal. And if he kicks this, the difference will only be one point once again. Well, there's certainly no argument about the trip. So Waitman will take the shot at goal. And 85 to 92. This is Waitman having or trying for his first goal. This will bring Richmond within one point. Yes, it's through. So the Tigers get back within one point of Melbourne on seven's big lead. 13-14, Melbourne. Richmond, 13-13. As we see, little Dale Waitman on screen has not had a great day today. He was replaced after a quarter and put on the interchange bench. But this quarter, he's done a lot better. He's obviously come back very, very determined. As we see, Daryl Cox is Notice. being interchanged. There it is there. And I think that's Daryl Burke coming off, is it? Yes, it is. And uh, let's see where Cox goes. So he's going to the back line. He's normally a forward try and pick it up in a moment exactly where he lines up but there's the ball coming down to the deck Batterston gets a hurry kick up towards half forward players go in after it it's uh, grabbed there by Lockman onto the left foot out wide he's looking out there for Philip Walsh Walsh with a hand pass further afield his ex Collingwood teammate there in Johnny Anir on the left foot looking down there towards uh, Michael Roberts who takes a good mark well, Roberts. He'll, he'll be looking for Roach I would think he did very Roach, very well early in the game Roach Michael is trying Roberts. to break away from Regolo Regolo stood there facing him and Roach had to lead into the forward pocket good play by Regolo he turned his back on Good play in one way because he wouldn't take his eye off Roach and he just he yeah. wanted to see which way Roach was going I don't think it was good play by uh, Michael Roberts to kick it to the boundary no right? no he should have brought the ball back in the centre but he did go toward the lead of Roach now it's back with Bailey he's overrun it he can't pick it up James is in there waiting for the ball to come out Bailey went straight back in the gate a bit of a terrier that Bailey oh, he's a goer he's got straight in there and that's him on the, he and Eustace on the ground having a bit of a dip under there I don't think there's anything in it I think they're only trying to get the ball out but they don't realize the ball's already out Jack Dyer would say they're having a bit of a dance in there. Uh, Jack, a bit more than dancing. A bit more going. than a dance. Yeah, I think so. It's not I don't think I'd tangle with Danny Hughes either. <laughs> Young, see, um, little Thornton gone in there too. It's yeah, a, it with Hughes, gee. Well, I suppose their tempers would be frayed having to play out there in that heat. I just yeah. looked at that for my, that uh, temperature reading before. It dropped down to 35 degrees, so if that's any respite, it was getting, 36. It's down to 35 now, so you can imagine what they'd be like out there. Well, it's getting the cooler, Jack. Yeah, it is getting cooler. So the tempers are getting frayed. They're getting hotter. It's in the forward zone for Richmond. A chance of a goal from this bounce, but there's a lot of people around it. Lee down looking for Waitman players all oh, in the back has to be the Batterston is it yes said the umpire umpire Howlett. umpires have done an excellent job today under trying conditions Howlett and Hinton now here's uh, Zantuck receiving that hand pass now he should keep going oh lovely shepherding there by Hughes gee he's done some great team thing things today as he shepherded Waitman there there's a long kick but who's there no one this player this man's nearly best on the ground at the moment I think he might have taken over from Johnson that's Peter Francis he brings it towards centre wing Zantuck ducks back and he's done well since coming on Jack. yes he has but he hasn't used the ball as well as he should have I thought Madison gets the ball up high this one will come to ground too no Teddy Finch has got in underneath it and taken a good mark now he'll be looking for Reynolds but Reynolds wants some support from Rovers down here because the ball will come to turf there it is there here's Grinter going in can't pick it up a chance for Stewart shot it out to Roberts Roberts picks up walks nicely gets the ball moving out toward the halfback flank area where it bounces badly for all concern and finds the boundary line. Now, see, they wanted to roam yeah. it down around the pack there, and they didn't have one. Well, Grinder tried to pick up, but he didn't have a great deal of support. I'll tell either. you what, a good rover down there around Reynolds would get a feast of goals because that kid's contesting everything against Peter McCormack. The ball's hitting the deck, and they're not getting full value. Here's uh, big Steve Turner with the ball. He seems to lack a yard. Wilson's been fairly quiet, but here's a chance for Darrell Cox as he hit, kicks it to Reynolds. Oh, played it beautifully. Now it's Fidge on the left foot. Hooks it back. It's a goal. Beautiful goal to Teddy Fidge. And there he is, he's very proud of that one as Melbourne creep further in front. 14-14, 98, leading Richmond 13-13, 91. Well, that's exactly what we've been talking about. The ball coming down off the hands of the players contesting round the goal mouth. And Teddy Fidge, he swept on that just like a typical rover would and snapped on the left foot. It was a good piece of football. He read the ball well and uh, brought up the result. So Melbourne looking now with a seven-point lead. And we're 26 minutes into the third term. That last quarter is going to be a torrid affair, as I keep telling you about the temperature. 
It is dropping slightly, but boy, it's still pretty hot out there. And their energies would have been zapped now. Picked up as Batterson got the ball, moving out toward the centre of the ground. He's out toward the half-back flank. Lockman's overrun it a bit for Richmond. Got a hand pass back in the direction of Roberts. Roberts rode the bump well. Got a hand pass back to Lockman. He shoots it back out to Egan. Egan's going to try and run the field. He's got caught by Cole. The ball shot up to Ward Bailey. There's a chance for James there. Bailey did some good shepherding. Used Gaines' possession. Gives it back to Regolo. Regolo moves it down. Kicks straight to Ward Egan. Lyon couldn't get back to take it. The players are getting a bit slower now on their actions. The ball pushed to ground. It's on the turf. On the half forward zone for Melbourne. It's been picked up by Stretch. He's going into Ward's Reynolds. Reynolds has no support once again. The ball comes to turf. It's over the boundary line and McCormick's quite happy to see it there. Oh yes, and uh, McCormick used his body beautifully there against Reynolds. Uh, of course, I don't think the kick was placed all that well to uh, Reynolds' advantage. The player coming down the ground, uh, Stretch should have kicked it the other side because that's where uh, Reynolds had the drop on his opponent. There's a hurry kick off the side of the boot, but Melbourne once again lifting their game as Wilson, oh, he's looking for the short one there. Yeah, but nearly kicked this. Well. Yeah, it'll take a good kick. He could almost get it, Jack. I think you're right. If but he gets uh, under a torpedo, which he can use, he'll just about do it. But he's not going to feel tiny. He often tries to run around the man on the mark when he's in a position like this, but I don't think he's got enough uh, clearance behind the man. Let's see if he does. No. He's going for the drop putt up towards the square. Who's there? No one. And the ball is forced through for a behind. So, scoreboard moves Melbourne a little bit further in front they've moved on to 14-15 leading Richmond 13-13 a difference of eight points we're getting up toward the 28 minute mark now not quite there on the, the third term on seven's big league of course and the ball out and out of side taken by Poole his long hand pass finds Waitman now here's an opportunity Waitman's on the centre wing oh he's left it behind oh what a, what a catastrophe it's been picked <laughs> up by Newport he moves the ball down toward oh. the flank but he's Kick's been intercepted. Free kick. No, he's playing a free kick to further down the field now. It'll probably go Richmond. No, or Melbourne's way, is it? Melbourne, I think. Let's see which way the players go. I think it's kind of Cox, is it? Oh, gee, Waitman had a chance, didn't he, to open up. He's gone for the bounce, and the ground's that hard. The ball's gone straight back over his head. He didn't have to bounce very high to do that, I know, but I he's missed think. the run of the ball. I, and, think, uh, I don't think they know what's going on here. Oh, he's got to go round over his mark, does he? No, the umpire is yes. pushing him around. It's Cox with the ball on centre wing. So anyhow, the action continues on Seven's big league. Up toward Big Peter Moore, who put the ball down. It's been hooked back around the corner. A chance now for Fitch. Yes! Good, good play to work. Great play by Reynolds out there to hook that back. And what a good little mark. That was a great mark. Good play by Reynolds, as Peter McKenna told you. Didn't try and kick a goal. He just brought the ball back in front of goal. Hopeful, or knowing, that Fitch was there. And Fitch took a good mark. So... This really is a very important goal, a kick for goal by Ted Fitch. But behind the play, Waitman was having a bit of a run in with Cox, and there's a bit of a mismatch as we see Fitch. Oh, don't missed tell it. me. He's missed it badly by the look of the goal umpire. Well, he's just kicked a beautiful left foot snap goal, and he's got a standing kick from only 35 to 40 metres out, and a very important shot at goal, and he's, he's bombed out. So Melbourne, 14-16, 100, have a nine-point advantage over Richmond on 13-13, 91. Peter McCormack looking for who? Looking up for Piet and found it. Good pass. He's at half back. He's playing on with a hand pass to Stewart. Craig Stewart from half back. Normally a long kick. He kicks it wide looking for Mark Lee. Oops. Oh, he nearly dropped the sitter. He's got it though. Danny Hughes has done well on Mark Lee today. He's played yes. him close and tight. Lee hasn't had a, a dominant role in the game as he kicks it down looking for Roach. Roach and Regalo, oh, almost the interference here, but here's Landy onto the right foot, hooks it back as it a mark to Richmond. Yes, and the umpire is Stephen James, dived at the ball. He's only about 15 metres out directly in front, and if he kicks this one, and which he should, it will make the difference three points in favour of Melbourne. Marvellous how the fortunes can change. Fitch just had a shot at goal and missed. Now James gets it to the other end and popped it through and the game tightens up. We're in for a great final term here. So that's 97 playing 100. Melbourne leading on Sevens Big League. Steve James has kicked uh, one goal for the game. He is... Well, he's been pretty well held down there. He hasn't been dominant. They're missing Pickering, of course. He did a couple of nice things early. Yes, he did. And uh, Pickering, of course, was their best forward. He kicked three goals and then had to leave the ground with what looked like a severely injured hip. 
So I don't think he'll come back on the ground as we see the bounce of the ball about to take place. Three points the difference. A tremendous game here under trying conditions. Full marks to the players for a gutsy effort today as we see Waitman down towards Craig Stewart. Oh, he knocks it on, but waiting there is Nigel Cole. Melbourne will desperately try and get a forward and get a goal. There's a good mark to Richards. He's done well on that half forward line, Russell Richards. He's got the loose man. Has he got it to him? Oh, one-handed. Needs two hands, uh, Wilson. And there's the siren to end the third quarter here at the MCG. What a great game we have on our hands. Melbourne in front, just 14-16, 100 to Richmond, 14-13, a total of 97. New people watching Sevens Big League this evening, have a look at these players out there. They must be exhausted now. The temperature is 34 degrees Celsius as we go into the final term on Sevens Big League with only three points between the teams. Melbourne 14-16, 100 points. Richmond 14-13, 97. All the action being brought to you from the Melbourne Cricket Ground. There's the bounce of the ball now. Who'll take it away? Oh, gee, it's a near. He caught one right across the face too. Play on, said the umpire. Zantuck came on at the beginning of the... Uh, third quarter has done particularly well as he always does Shane Zantuck I was very surprised that he didn't actually start on the ground but this has been a seesaw game right from the beginning but no one knows which way it's going to go it looks like a bit of cramp there by one of the Melbourne players we see the ball thumped away it's grabbed by Anir he can't get out of the pack and uh, full marks for every one of those players out on the ground today it actually got to 36 degrees Celsius at one stage and uh, the players have fought tooth and nail right from the beginning of this game and uh, not one player has st stopped for one moment. At the end of the first term, Richmond led by nine points at half-time. Melbourne led by 15 points, but Richmond kicked six straight goals in the third term to Melbourne's three goals, six, and uh, Melbourne had their lead whittled down to only three points, which they still have. That's not much, I know, but by gee, three points out there today would be a hell of a lead from my book. The ball thumped to the boundary line and it's going to be a throw in on Spilly on centre wing in front of the members stand. You can see the shadow of the members stand there on the ground. Another player leaving the field. We haven't seen many cramps. So these players must be fairly fit, Pete, to withstand the, the pressure they of the are. day. They're, they're very fit these, these days. There's Michael Roberts who's played a very good game in his first game for the Tigers. On the left foot up towards full four. There's a bit of pace by Landy. He tries to hook it back into play but unfortunately for the Richmond side he puts it out of bounds on the full. That was Brett Bailey who came off the ground. He's a good, hard, tough player. Full marks to Danny Hughes today too. It's taken on Mark Lee. He and Peter Moore in tandem, but uh, Hughes, there's a loose man as we see the ball kicked across oh. from Addison. A sitter dropped by Joe Regalo. He's had a great uh, duel down there with Michael Roach. Roach has kicked three goals, but Regalo has done pretty well. There's a hand pass coming out there to Strawn. Greg Strawn hooks it back towards half forward. The mark has been taken by uh, Stephen James. He swings onto the left foot. A long driving high drop punt. And was it touched? I don't think so. I think the Tigers have hit the front. They have. And Richmond move on to 15 goals, 13, 103, leading Melbourne 14-16, 100. Well, that was all set up for Melbourne to take that ball away from the full-back position, but Regolo dropped the easy mark, but he went for a left foot pass along the ground. <laughs> I suppose he went for it along the ground, but it was a very well-delivered kick, and then Richmond gained possession, got it down to James, and he thumped it through for a goal, but Melbourne should have had that ball up in their half-forward zone in the matter of seconds, but they messed it up. Well, it's two goals now to uh, Stephen James. He's done some nice things uh, down on the forward line. Pickering was their best forward. He kicked three goals early and then went off with a very severe hip injury. Now, here's Newport. Melbourne badly need to reply. They don't want to let Richmond get a bit of a run on. Here's Neil Peart, who's played particularly well at centre-half back today. Uh, he and Francis have been outstanding for Richmond as he brings it wide. Who's there for Richmond? It's Strawn. And uh, what's Greg Strato? Don't tell me he's kept it in play. No, said the boundary umpire. But one man would be happy to see uh, Richmond hit the front. Jack, I'm sure, is uh, the old Richmond store with Charlie Callender, who is uh, just recovering from an operation in hospital. And if you're watching the replay, Charlie, all the best to you. And uh, let's hope for your sake the Tigers can get up. Yeah, Charlie will be barracking for the Tigers, all right, because he was asking a few questions this morning. Here's one of your new boys, Charlie Lockman, picking up. Can't do much with it. He regains it though, got a little hand pass away and the umpire said a free kick will go to Lockman for a trip. Didn't quite see it myself, but Michael Lockman has the ball for Richmond. Over to Anir. Michael Lockman, of course, an ex-under-19 player and has played a season in South Australia. As Anir brings it across the ground, he's been an excellent player too. Now who's this with the ball now? Trevor Poole, one of the blondes for 
Richmond getting it towards Peter McCormack who's had his work cut out today uh, playing on young Michael Reynolds who hasn't capitalised on a number of opportunities oh gee the players both looked at each other there as we see Peter Moore with a hand pass to Johnson who's carrying a bit of a groin injury after dominating the first half up they go this is that a mark yes a, mark. a good mark oh don't give it away now young fellow that uh, player there is Stephen Turner the ex-West Australian player he's kicked one with a lovely goal early in the game that was a good mark Jack. yes that one he kicked was about twice the distance he is now from goal so we know that he can make the distance he kicks the ball a long way what he has to do now is get it all get his whole act together because Melbourne are trailing Richmond by three points only four and a half minutes into the final term Stephen Turner with one goal to his credit desperately needs this for Melbourne sake puts it up the umpire has a good look at it it's a goal Melbourne are back in front of the MCG on sevens big league 15 16 106 Melbourne to Richmond 15 13 103 and there he is Steve Turner he'd be delighted to have kicked two goals in his initial league game and uh, well it's been an amazing game today because uh, at various stages you would have thought one of the sides was going to run away with it but the other sides fought back now it's Melbourne's turn when Richmond were looking good for Melbourne to fight back so uh, Peter Moore a big responsibility on him gets it to Johnson who's been a good player we must mention also the flower has gone off the ground for Melbourne now here is Landy swinging onto the left foot the little short chip he's looking for Roach Roach under pressure well played Joe Regalo that's good fullback play Roach caught again beautiful football by the young fullback Joe Regalo and I think he's certainly got a lot of promise now the umpire's saying that the player made no oh that's a shocking decision that guy had all players that pounced on the ball. He had no chance of trying to get that out of the pack as we see. Well, I don't know, Jack. At this stage of the game, I would have bounced that one up. There's the kick yes, from the here, up towards right. full four. There's Regalo again doing some great work. Oh, the bounce favours uh, number 37, is young Ron Thornton, who's played, kicked three great goals today for Richmond. He came across from Brunswick. There's the bounce coming out to Egan. Here's Philip Egan. A little stab pass. It's a good one. And he finds Michael Roach. 35 metres out from goal, directly in front, and young Joe Regalo had no hope whatsoever of stopping that one. Now he was behind Roach on that occasion by about five metres, expecting a long kick, but Roach, with three goals to his credit, will have this shot from about, I suppose, 35 to 40 out. We know he can make the distance. Head over the ball, you'll see him come in, it'll be concentration, the ball will go to the foot properly. You can bet on that one. There it goes now, off the boot. Well, it's a goal. Kicked by Roach. Richmond back in front on seven's big lead. Three points the difference. Well, you can't give Michael Roach uh, too many opportunities. Regalo, in my book, has played a tremendous game down there at fullback today. But, of course, Roach is a champion player and he doesn't need many opportunities. He's kicked four. The difference now is three points in favour of the Tigers. Now, which way will it go? Can Melbourne fight back? Because that's the way it's been right throughout the game. Peter, 29 shots by Richmond, 31 shots by Melbourne. Melbourne trailing by three points. So the story's on the scoreboard. The accuracy is what's making all the difference at this stage of the game. It's been thumped out of the pack oh. and hurriedly booted up by Hughes. Got the boot to it. Tapped down. A chance here for Melbourne if they can break through. Johnson with the ball in front of him. Could have been a trip. The umpire said it is a trip. So he will take this free kick on the half forward flank. They'll be looking, they'll need a rover up there because Reynolds has been con contesting everything and the ball's been coming to ground. So Melbourne will need a rover around the packs as the fly players fly high. No mark is called. And the umpire said a bounce. I think that was uh, young Steve Turner who flew for that one over the back of the pack. He very, very nearly, there he is getting up now. He very, very nearly took that one. And he's got a great pair of hands. Probably lacks a yard in pace, but uh, he's done some very promising things today. We're in that forward pocket. Melbourne must keep the ball on their forward line until they score a goal. No, well, France is going to change that. He kicks it in. Here's a chance. Oh, what an opportunity there. It could have been a free kick to Newport. It has been paid. Yes, Steve Newport put his body in and uh, received the benefit of the free kick. He's certainly within kicking distance. He's only 35 to 40 metres out directly in front. And Melbourne need this one. Pete, even though we say only 35 to 40 metres out, at this stage of the game, those fellas are going to be very, very tight. They feel like lead weights, though, with yes. their legs today. So a 35 to 40 metre kick now is uh, going to be about a 60 metre kick under normal circumstances. I agree, Jack. Three points the difference in favour of Richmond. Can Steve Newport put Melbourne in front by three points? The funny-looking uh, kick. It's a shocker. 
as Jack predicted. Uh, your legs uh, on a hot day like this at the end of the game must feel very, very heavy as we see the scoreboard show. What is it? Two should points the difference in favour of Richmond. This should never be allowed to happen. McCormick went for short pass to Nia there and uh, luckily enough they had to bring it back. Lucky enough from Melbourne's point of view because Nia had broken away. Good mark. Good mark. That was a great mark. He was being held by one arm out there was Neil Peart and he took the mark one-handed. So very well done indeed. Now we hand part into Michael Roberts who has his hand bandaged up. I notice his left or his right wrist. The ball up to is a chance for Richmond. It's Waitman. He's gone for Roach and he's found it. Good play by Waitman had a very disappointing first half. Landy, game. magnificent play by Landy. It was Jack. good play by Landy also to get the ball out oh, to Waitman. Top play. But then uh, I think Regolo might have been expecting a Waitman to have a shot for goal, yeah. but he shot it straight to Roach who was leading out in front of Regolo. And from the shadows of the light standard now, we'll see Roach attempt to kick his fifth goal. Roach on its way. Hooks drifted a bit. It's a goal. Roach has kicked his fifth goal. Richmond in front now to the tune of eight points over Melbourne. Yes, and uh, full marks there to a tremendous team play by Graham Landy, who didn't attempt to take the mark. He knew Waitman was waiting over the back. Tremendous roving by Waitman too. Knocked it over the back. An unselfish play, as usual, by Waitman as he fed Michael Roach. And as I said, Regalo's done a good job, and yet Michael Roach has kicked five goals. Now it's a test for the young Melbourne side to see if they can fight back, because they're now eight points behind, and uh, they haven't been in that position much today. There's as we plenty see. of time, though. There's only ten and a half minutes gone in the final term. Here's a chance now, yes, for Fidge to kick a goal from only about 40 metres out. He stands his ground, too, to make sure that the player doesn't crib over the mark. And uh, Ted Fidge missed a very easy goal in the third term, Pete, from only about 20 metres out. At a vital time, too. Yes, it was a vital time, but this time he's twice that distance out, so he'll be having, I won't say having doubts about his own ability, but he won't be chock full of confidence well, in what he's doing. Sometimes these longer shots can be a bit easier because you relax more. He's going for his third goal, and I think he has it. Yes, Ted Fidge kicks his third goal for Melbourne, and the game tightens up once again on Seven's Big League. What a treat you people are having. Yes, two points to difference. The Tigers in front, 17-13, 115 to Melbourne, 16 goals, 17, 113. And this has been a tremendous exhibition of football. Full marks to both sides. It's been nip and tuck all day. Both sides really giving everything. They both desperately want to win this first match of the season. And I've got no idea which way it's going to go. And I've said that right from the beginning of the game. There's Lee. Knocking it out. Danny Hughes has been a terrific team player today with his strength, shepherding, bullocking, tough work, and uh, there he goes kick. again. And a man at the back. Yes, that's a strange. Oh, that's the wrong way. I think there was, was shepherding, Jack. He had the hand around his shoulder. Oh. Yes. It was. A, I thought he played that the wrong way, but Richmond do have the ball. They've kicked into the centre of the oh, ground. Free kick, kick there. Kick there, not paid. Through Richmond now, through Egan will come forward. They'll be looking for Roach, and there he is. Roach! Could have been 15 metres there too, but the umpire no may not pay that. No way. No, it could have been, I said, but he. Well, I don't know whether he was that. pushed or whether he just stumbled well, after taking that, the mark. If played that for 15, I'd give up the game because that, that kid down there at full back, Ricardo, well, was he did push his head in the middle of the back after he'd taken the mark. I think as he was taking it, Jack. Right, Pete, we won't go into that. Roach going for his sixth goal. Can he increase Richmond's lead, which is now only two points over Melbourne? He's a Time great clock. kick. I know he's a great kick. He's kicked five. Make that six. Oh, no, hit the post. That's his third poster. Oh, he's hit the post on three occasions a day and kicked five goals. So he's, he's having a good day in one way, but not in all ways. Well, for the good of the game, that's probably a good thing he missed because we're going to see a tremendous finish, I think. Here, There's Danny Hughes has been covering more ground than the early settlers today. A big fly over the back is Regalo. He's battling his heart out. It could have been a free kick to Richmond. Yes, in the it back. Is. Yes, it was. And uh, who is it? Egan, I think it is. Philip Egan. Oh, gee, Melbourne don't want to let Richmond get the next one. There's the kick. He's looking down there towards James. He has it fisted away. Here's Hughes. He'll go in. Oh, gee, goes in hard as usual. Free kick. Oh, boy. He's got his play to free kick. He said he was being held but not in possession. There's a Richmond player out, oh, down out there too. I can't quite pick up who he is in the hands of the trainers. Just left of that shot we have now. But he seems to be all right. Now, Richmond coming forward. Melbourne cannot afford to let them kick a goal. They must get that ball away at all costs. More there in front, can't take them up. There were three Melbourne players could have picked that up. Zantuck soccer's off the ground. 
but there was a free kick prior to that and it's going Richmond's way by the look of it so there was one Richmond player to three Melbourne players and he's emerged with the ball and a shot for goal I think it's Graham, Graham Landy, Landy it is. well that's a shame for Melbourne to uh, well obviously the free kick was there but uh, it's a shame at this stage of the game because uh, it's so close uh, three points the difference let's hope it doesn't knock the stuffing out of Melbourne and see if they're good enough to fight back as we see Graham Landy Right in front of goal on that left foot of his. And I think he's put it through, he has. So the difference now is nine points in favour of the Tigers. Yes, a good goal kick by Landy on that occasion. It makes his second goal and in my calculations. And Graham Landy uh, kicking that shot from off the, uh, well, an angle shot anyhow, not off the boundary line, but a very, very vital goal because that makes Melbourne's task that much harder. They have to muster all their strength, courage and talent try and take this game away from Richmond they're trailing now by nine points and we're nearly 15 minutes into the final term you're on sevens big league all the action from the Melbourne cricket ground hooked out beautifully to Waitman by Lee he gets it down toward the half forward zone and it looks like Richmond could run away here a hand pass comes back out from Laddie it's shot into the forward pocket yes Johnny Anir overruns the ball in goes uh, Nigel Cole hand passes it back he gets it out wide. Here's the kick coming right out towards the half forward line. Up they go. Oh, Turner couldn't take the mark. It was a good attempt. Oh, cleverly done. Beautiful play by Thornton. This kid can play football as he brings it towards half forward. James is there. Doesn't get the bounce of it. Regalo overruns it. In they go again. Who's this? I think it was uh, Burke. Gets it across to Cole. Cole up towards oh, the centre of the ground. And that'll be 15 metres against Batterston. Bad play. Eustace with the ball. Mark Eustace, the ex Essendon player. Let's see what he can do with this one. He's going for the long kick. He'll probably look for Michael Roach. Roach at the back's got his name written all over this. Up he goes. Yes. Oh, boy. I think that football, instead of T.W. Sharon, had M. Roach written all over that one. Yes, he had to sit. He was a, he was a great overhead mark, though, isn't he? He's a great mark, Roach. And from around about a position of 15 metres out from goal, you wouldn't want to bet against him. He's kicked five goals, he's hit the post three times, and I would say this would be goal number six coming up off the boot of Michael Roach. Goal number six for Roach on seventh big league. Richmond go ahead of Melbourne to the tune of another six points. Well, I think some of the uh, Melbourne players, and understandably so, Jack, are look very, very tired, as of course Richmond, they've got to suffer the same uh, conditions of course but some of those Richmond players are really running full steam at the moment a few of the Melbourne players seem to have tired and they're not chasing their men as hard and I think that a bit of the stuffing has been knocked out of it yes well, we did say even before the game started you and I were talking and I said the fittest team would win now to have a team this fit at this stage of the game is quite remarkable because the temperature is still on 35 degrees so what to be down there on the playing area I don't know it'll be pretty hot I'll tell you now the ball's forced out of the pack picked up by Strawn and he kicked in toward the forward pocket, half forward flank area. A bad bounce for an ear. Melbourne a chance to come forward. Yes, this uh, is Burke coming away with the football. He goes for the short pass up to Teddy Fitch. Well, they've got time, Jack, to come back if they're good enough. Let's see if they can do it as we see the long kick coming up towards the forward pocket. Not a well-directed kick. Johnson's definitely carrying a groin as he gets it across towards his teammate Gary Lyon. I think he's put it through. He has. It's a goal to Melbourne, so maybe they can come back. They've moved on to 17-17, 119, to Richmond, 19-14, 128. All the Demons, if they live up to their name, shouldn't give up the ghost, Peter. It was a good goal kicked by a line on that occasion. Still a long way to go, isn't it? When you've got to pick up nine points, it mightn't sound much, but nearly 18 minutes have gone. Well, the time's there. If the they're time's good enough, there, they must get good the next one. If they can get the ball out of the middle right from the centre bounce and get it through for a goal, we're back to the old anyone's ball game bit. So, let's see what can happen on Seven's Big League. All the action from the MCG. Been thumped out by Turner and thumped on again. The legs are getting tired. Here comes Wilson. In goes Piet. Piet being held by Wilson. It wasn't very smart. It wasn't very smart at all. No, he didn't really take the ball, Piet, did he? No, he's being held. He didn't, didn't even get near it. Up toward the wing position. Grinder can't get hold of it yet. He's going back after it now. Little bit of a tackle. Here's a chance for Newport. Oh. Newport swings around. Can he find a teammate? Not as yet he can't. Oh. Yes, he's Turner. Now let's see if he can kick. He gets one down towards Reynolds. Ah! Oh, what a great mark! What a great mark! He plays on to Wilson. Wilson goes into the open goal! Melbourne are coming back. My word, 
Sevens Big League fringe of all the action. What a tremendous performance that was. A lucky bounce back around the centre of the ground. Favoured Steve Turner. He did a wobbly old kick. Tremendous full forward play by Reynolds. Unbelievable play. Played in front. He had two to beat. He dived, took the mark. He could have kicked it himself. He unselfishly gave the hand pass across to Brian Wilson, who was almost caught. Ran into the open goal, and now they're back in business. The difference is three points in favour of the Tigers. Well, well. Can they win it now? I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Vic Turner goes in, beaten in the ruck. It's hooked out by Roberts. Didn't quite get a clean kick at it. Newport taps it back, comes back to Roberts, picked up by Lee. It goes out towards Burke. Burke with the ball in front of him. I said before, the legs are getting tired. Maybe he can find a little bit of pace here. Burke spins around. He's looking for a teammate. He goes for oh. Zantuck. But there's two of them there. Zantuck don't make any mistakes now. There was Zantuck and Fitch. He's still on half back. He got leg. It's a free trip to Zant oh, free kick to Zantuck, but he's still on the half back line. Melbourne needs oh. three points to level. They're trailing Richmond by three points. Twenty minutes gone of the final term at the MCG. Zantuck drives up. Is a chance now for Grinton to take the mark. He did he hold it? I don't know whether he did or not. I think he'd have to pay. But he's been paid the mark. Now who can he touchy. find? Who can he find, Pete? Can he find Reynolds? Oh, the kick is short. Reynolds is out in front. Can he take it? It's on the turf. He can't hold it. Francis is in there, about to be tackled. Gets the kick moving up towards Roberts. Up goes Trenton. Can't take the mark. Play on the call. The ball's on the turf. It's in that chance for Melbourne. In goes Eustace. Hooks it out, but can't really get it out of the pack. Picked up by Cole, but the umpire comes into bounce. Don't tell me we're going to have another year like last year, Jack. We saw some ripper games this year. Well, I'll tell you what, what a tremendous start to the season this is to have a look at this game it's been a fantastic effort full marks to every one of those players out there today giving their guts for their side as we see Newport going after it oh it hooks it back which way will it bounce some good smothering went on there there's a near getting a hurry kick up in the air a one out contest Landy was there taken away by his teammate there in Eustace he's got the ball oh boy as players go in hard, a bit of a shove there from Landy on uh, Teddy Fitch. You the know, bounce Peter, will take place right on centre wing. One silly free kick here can turn the yep. game one way or the other. The players have to be disciplined in their actions here because a stupid free kick or any foolish action can penalise the entire team. There's only three points between the teams. We're 21 and a half minutes into the final term. Richmond hold the advantage of the, th of the three points. The ball's on centre wing, so it's in neutral territory and Strawn keeps it in play. He's picked up here by Joe Regolo. He goes for a bounce. That's dangerous. He's got through, though. Gets a hand pass into Zantuck. Zantuck torpedo punt up toward the half-forward zone. Up they fly. Here's a chance now. The hand pass comes out. It's a free kick. Richmond's way. Holding the man. Oh, gee, it was touch and go whether he had the ball, too. But it's a free kick to Peart. Clever play by Peart as he goes wide. And he finds Michael Lockman. The umpire's oh. gone down with the cramp. Oh, the umpire's down as he kicks it wide to a near. Here's a chance for Richmond. The short pass up towards uh, Hughes for Melbourne. Danny Hughes, what will he do? He should go to the boundary. He does. And the ball is in the forward pocket for Richmond. Although he goes to the boundary, it's not really in Melbourne's, to Melbourne's advantage, Peter. No. The umpire getting up now. No, he he didn't get the cramp. But this, the boundary throw in here... Is, is in Richmond's favour. I know, then. but he, he didn't have much hope. If he had it come back into play, he would have been collared by the Richmond bloke hot in his heels. Right, but this... Richmond lead by three points. It's in their forward pocket. If they get a goal here, it's just about curtains for Melbourne. Cole tried to find oh. it out. Now, someone kicked that. I'm not too sure who Cole. kicked it. It's going to be... I didn't think Cole had possession, but it's going to be kicked... Now in for Richmond, a James. chance for Richmond's score. And he wouldn't kick a goal from there. Well, Peter, he's a left he? footer. That's the only thing in his favour. It would take a sensational kick. 23 minutes all but gone of the final term with Richmond leading by three points. James in possession for Richmond. It'll, it'll take a mammoth kick to get a goal from there. There's the kick on the left foot. It's a wobbly one. Can someone take a mark? Hughes. Oh, he's... Full marks to Hughes today. He's, I reckon he's been fantastic. He's been a great team man, tough, strong, has taken on Mark Lee and under pressure there is as cool, cool as a cucumber. He gets it down towards the half-back line. Well done, Joe Regolo. In they go after it. Alan Johnson suffering from uh, a bad groin injury. He gets it out towards Regolo and the young fella on the left foot gets it down. Now it's in Melbourne's forward line on half-forward flank Jack. Well, oh, what a tremendous game. There's someone down. Is that Ellen Johnson with the I think it is, cramp? Peter. Or was it, whether he's got groins gone on him? I think it has. He's, at, he's in the wars out there. He's not giving up. He's going up toward the action once again. The ball about to be bought in on Melbourne's half-forward flank. It's about 70 to 80 metres. Might be more.
possession, got a hand pass away. Here's Johnson, I told you he wouldn't give up. Johnson with the ball for Melbourne, walks around the opposition. He gets it now and drives into the half forward zone. A Melbourne mark or goal can take the game out. There's the oh. kick toward goal. It's, no, it's run across the face of goal. It's in Melbourne's forward pocket on the members' side. And uh, the ball out of bounds. Oh, gee, a hand pass wouldn't have gone astray. I know the pressure's on, but they had two loose men waiting for that hand pass. It didn't come. It's in that forward pocket area. Can the Demons get up? We're West seven Wimpelli. seconds. Seven seconds away from time on. Well, there's Cox trying to get his boot the ball. There's Hall. Oh, was it holding the ball? No, said the umpire. As players dive on top of it. This is only 20 minutes, 20 metres, I should say, outside the Melbourne goal. Time clock showing 25 minutes and 10 seconds gone. We're in 10 seconds into the final term time on period. And as the shadows lengthen over the MCG, all the action in Melbourne's forward pocket. Three points between the teams. Richmond lead by that slender margin. Regalo takes the mark. He's right out, though, on the point of the, uh, the, point of the centre square. And I, don't think he, I don't think he can kick that distance. Up it goes into the square, a big mark or a little rover will do the trick here for Melbourne, the ball on the turf, Richmond fight back though, it's a chance now for Waitman, got it out of the pack, it's been taken away and Lockman gets it out, gives it over to Strawn, Strawn fairly cool in the situation that's out there, gets around on the left foot, swings it back in toward the centre wing position where it's been taken here beautifully too, and a hand pass comes out by Burke. He tapped to get down there was Fidger, was being held, and Fidge will take the free kick. Oh, gee, and his teammate who he tried to knock it on to had been dispossessed behind the play, so uh, uh, that was luck's of fortune for Melbourne as we see Fidge with a high one. Can someone take the big mark? It's thumped away. In they go. Stretch. It's Alan Johnson. He's picked it up out of the pack. He kicks long. He's missed. One, one point. So the difference now, Jack, is two points. Only two in points. In favour of Richmond. And the time clock, 20, nearly 26 and a half minutes into the final turn. Richmond lead by two points at the MCG over Melbourne. 128 to 126, the time ticking away. Melbourne desperately wanting a goal. Players weighed down, they nearly spoiled each other there. Uh, Cox and Moore. Now Moore's a bit slow to move it forward. If Reynolds can take the mark in the square, he could just about kick it, but they're hard to take up there. Good mark under extreme pressure to Peter McCormack. Oh, great mark by Peter McCormack, the ex-Magpie. That was, as Jack said, under great pressure. He kicks it wide, stretches there for Melbourne. No mark, is this Johnson again? A hand pass over the top to Batterston. He goes for the short one, yes! The mark has been taken by Teddy Fitz. Once in front. He's going for his fourth goal, and what a kick it's going to take. Teddy Fitz puts it on its way, it's through! Fitz has put Melbourne in front. You'd think it was a grand final, but the opening game of season 86, that's his fourth goal. Is it one yet? Ah, that's for sure. It's not one yet, which would have plenty of time to come back. Can they do so? Well, here's a chance for Melbourne again, Batterston. Bailey, good play to Wilson. Wilson knocks it on. Oh, here's a chance. Gary Lyon into the open goal. He stabs. What's happened? I think he's kicked it. Yes. Oh, boy. This is a magnificent performance by Melbourne. The Demons have hit back again. 20 goals, A.D. 138 lead Richmond. 1914, 128. Give you me, it's a great spectacle. I'm not just saying that. You have to be here to see it and believe it. Now Melbourne come again. Up to the half forward zone. These fellas are super fits so early in the season. It's been picked up on the half forward zone. Lockman of Richmond takes it away. He's gone short, finds Landy. Landy plays on, he's wrong footed. Got a hand pass into the half forward zone. A chance for Richmond to get a goal, but can they gain possession? They're only about 50 metres out from goal. It's been taken away by Regolo. He's done a great job. He kicks to the half forward zone. It's near the boundary line. Alan Johnson is in there. He's, he wants to get back on the ground and get back in the action. That's what's happening now. He's going back. Off That's the interchange it. bench. That's and coming off is Gary Lyon, who's just kicked that vital goal, possibly the winning goal for Melbourne. Taken by Michael Roberts. It rebounds off the opposition. It's been hurriedly kicked by Lockman again. Down to the wing position. Gee, these players are tied, but they're fighting back. Big Joe Regalo after the ball again. Can't get rid of it. Oh. So he runs it over the boundary line like a true defender. Well, full marks to that young kid, uh, Regalo. He, Roach has finally got on top of him in this quarter. He's been moved out towards centre-half back area. He's done some great things in this final quarter. And the kid will be dog-tired. He's covered a lot of territories. We see Eustace get it down towards the forward line, but ducking back to take the mark is uh, Bailey. The time clock showing we're nearly 30 and a half minutes into the final term. 
Melbourne have a lead over Richmond of 10 points. I would suggest at this stage that that would be a winning a lead. 30 and a half. There's a siren. There's a siren. At the Melbourne Cricket Ground on this opening day of season 1986, we have witnessed a great game of football between two sides that were down last season, Richmond and Melbourne. We've had a great game of football, as I said, 10 points between the teams. Every player out there is to be congratulated on a fine performance, magnificent effort, and that's what Australian football is all about. A fantastic game of football under extreme conditions. Congratulations, all concerned. And so the 86 season is away and running. Some good wins recorded on the weekend and, of course, disappointments. But every team will have them throughout the season. I'm sure with the pro football, though, you'll be able to stick with the game right throughout 1986.